Nigeria and that's my new passion and love. I never knew it could happen. Like I, like I said, when I met with President Jonathan, he disgraced me, I would say, because I went with all these people to go with me to my country. They went, they presented their projects, and the president was, was, he was docile, he was not present, he was not in the here and now. That's why I wrote that book. I don't know if we have the book, How to Be in the Here and Now. We don't have it. Okay, I have a book that is called How to Be in the Here and Now. But the whole president never knew what how it means to be in the here and now. He was always off, sleeping and dozing and things. So, uh, but to be in the here and now is a skill that for you to even be a personality, you must have it. But, then, but this is fundamental. This is where... I identify the most important thing to be, not to be done, but the most important problem with the nation, the most important challenge the country is having. This book is very comprehensive. And uh, this is my yeah, foundational book about Nigeria, about resolving Nigeria's problems. The other, pro the, uh, the other book I have here is for my countrymen who are religious, Muslims and Christians. Because even the president, even the, not, I didn't hear the president, but I heard the vice president, who is my friend, I heard him talking, saying things like this, uh, that only God can help Nigeria. I said, you are a professor. What's wrong? All of them have been brainwashed, you know. And um, so then he became vice president. And you know what one of the things he did? I mean, he's my, he's my guy. He knows he's supposed to know better. You know, he went and collected all the C, uh, what they call them, GOs and the senior pastors and filled the stadiums with them, just senior pastors of all over Nigeria. I said, because... If my people who are called by my name, I said, it's not, that will not fix, that will not build your industry, I bet you. To build industry, God have other keys. There are other ways. I mean, there are laws. Everything answers to laws. So anyway, he went and they were praying in the stadium. I said, pray as long as you want to. So when I saw them praying for the economy to recover, ah, for economy you are praying, that prayer will build your road, will build your infrastructure, would be your bridge. So I just got mad. I wrote this book. <laughs> <laughs> so this book is saying, only God can save Nigeria. What a myth. It's a myth. It's a myth that only God can save Nigeria. And any, everyone that has re read this book has gotten mad like me. You cannot get this. You cannot read this book and not get mad. You know, so this is another book about Nigeria. Then this one is my program for the recovery of Nigeria economy. This is, this, if, if Nigerian government will follow this program, we will definitely become one of the top 10 economies in the world. So I've written here my own strategies of how Nigeria economy could not just recover, but, over, you know, but become one of the top countries. These are practical, practical books. In fact, I think it was this book that Mayo was, the London girl who said she would never go back to Nigeria at first. When she read this one, she said, Pastor, now I'm ready to go. I said, what happened? <laughs> she said, that book. She said, I'm ready to go now. Mm. Or maybe it was the other one. Well, this is called Nigeria, the Nigerian economy, the way forward. If it's if implemented, even everybody wants to come back. Even without being implemented, just by reading it alone, people are ready to go to Nigeria. Then I have the, this one. I think this one is not just for Nigerians, but I wrote it for my people. Because I see that there is the reign of ignorance in my land. So I wrote this book. It's called The Mountain of Ignorance. And what is written here is that the greatest problem of man is not sin, nor Satan. It is ignorance. And I think every Nigerian needs to read this one. Then, my latest one, this, these are my gifts for the Nigerian 57 independent anniversary. Number one is how to make Nigeria the greatest country in the world. Woo! 
Yeah, but this is not a strategic book. This is just a book about motivation. It is just motivating people to look, know that, that it's possible, just to create positive. Because without faith and positive, without faith in the mind of the people, nothing will ever happen. So I'm just, it's your motivation now, to, to wake them up, to make them come alive. So how to make Nigeria, to make, they will see the possibility from here. It's easy to see the possibility. Then the other one is how the Nigerian economy can overtake the American economy. These are my two gifts of Nigerians' independence, this last independence. And this one also is motivational, that Nigerian economy can overtake American's economy. And it is fact. By the time you see, you know it's, it is real. And this one is real. This one is real too. So you believe faith comes. Because I'm going to write a book that's going to be called How to Bring About National Transformation Through the Power of Faith. Only people who have faith. That's why uh, Chinese people, that's what is driving them. If you have faith, if you are positive, you are optimistic, ooh, you, you will turn any economy around. And that is, these books will help Nigeria heal. Because right now we are sick with skepticism. Nigeria is sick of doubt. Nobody, you know, everybody is just doubting. That's why this book, these books will heal the land in the sense that if people will begin to be, will, will stop being skeptical and begin to believe, then for the first thing you see is that most people begin to go back home. The second thing you will see is that people begin to work hard for it. The next thing you begin to see is that they begin to talk about it and infect others with the same faith and belief that they have. So these two books right here, Nigeria to become the greatest country in the world, overcome the American economy, Who's, who can believe this? Who can say that? You need to, need to have real facts. And these books are full of facts that Nigerians can do this. Okay, let's continue with our presentation. Uh, how do we get the books? Oh, okay. I don't have these books in Nigeria yet, though. I'm not even having time for Nigeria yet. I'm, so I just, I'm just releasing them on Amazon. Yeah, I'm just releasing them on Amazon. And anybody who wants them can get them on Amazon. Amazon.com or okadabooks.com for our people in Africa. Maybe we're going to release them in Nigeria soon. I don't know. I'm still here. But once I leave here, and this is what I want to tell people, because... When I do presentations, like the people say, hey, come now, where are you sitting down? You say, again, I want to say that everything I'm presenting now, they will begin to work fully only when I leave Ukraine. While I'm in Ukraine, I cannot go and get things done. I cannot go and sit down. You know, I cannot, these things cannot start working without being on ground. It is when I come to Nigeria that I will be able to execute these things. I can do some things right now, but from, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not doing anything yet for, for Nigeria. I'm just getting ready, just getting the materials ready, because when we get home, all these things will be needed. You know, so that's what I'm just doing, preparatory work. Okay, thank you, man. Okay, can you put on the stuff? Hello? Not the video, just the slides. Just the slides. Somebody might need to help uh, Otumba there. Yeah, yeah, please help. Puska is here. It's with Pamonji to Yemu. Pamonji to Yemu. Hello, Lewushki. Puska on Siad. I raised the light to Yemu. Can you put off the light here? Put off this one. No, go, no, go back, go back to where you are. Okay, skill acquisition needs and how I plan to address that. So what are the, invest, uh, what are the uh, investigations? Yeah. What are the investigations I've done and preparations I've done in terms of preparing Nigerians to be relevant in terms of skills? As far as I'm concerned, we have a country of how do you say how do you say okay, we, I think we have a country of vegetarians and Philipp Philistines in, in, in terms of ignorance, I mean 
We, dull people. I wanted to say we have a country of, they have unskilled people. They have reduced us to a country of almost, I don't want to use idiots, but, you know, what is a good word instead of idiots? You know, people who are not skillful. Even if you want to have people to put tars in the ground, you have to go to Congo to import them. Even if you build a house of $2 million, you have to go, you know, I mean, you can't go to the toilet there. The water won't run or something. Uh, you know, they've just messed us up. Almost no Nigerian knows how to do anything. You call them intelligent, grown up, or what, adults? Yeah, unintelligent. Ah, uh, yeah. So they have, re they have reduced Nigeria to a country of unintelligent adults. And the only few ones who are educated, all of them want to become lawyers and doctors. Lawyers, doctors, architects, and who? Engineers. Bankers and engineers. No, that's it. Engineers. The whole country is just like being reduced to just unfunctional people. Adults who are not intelligent. So, the, but the most important thing I want to address is the question of skills. We must make our people skillful and competitive. So how do we do that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think I will need, so what I'm, okay, I don't think I will read all this one, so just to save the time. So what are the things I want to do? I want to start a, a, a technical schools, more practical schools that are, everybody is starting universities, I'm not interested in universities. I'm interested in schools that will be able to address these questions. So number one is architecture and building designs, next one. Automotive vehicle the trade. These are schools, colleges, we're just going to have colleges everywhere. Okay, next one. Aviation schools, building and construction trade, schools that will give college that will tra train people in these things, in these skills. Next one. No, no, go, go back. Yeah, next one. Railroad construction trade. Just skills, college, practical college. You know, our, just like you go to England, eh? a lot of our parents, they used to send them to England to go to the universities. But because you know, they couldn't pay or things like that, they couldn't get scholarships. Many of them just get diplomas. They do courses, they call them. Is it courses, correspondence? These are the kind of things they were doing them for. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to have all these kind of schools, colleges, skills, centers, just littering the whole place. So that even if our people are not educated, you know, as, you know, in, in, we, what we call, these are real education, skills. We should focus our education, I mean, our system from education to skills. Instead of getting education, everybody wants to say education, education. No. Let's get skills rather than so called uh, education. That it doesn't mean anything to most people. Okay, next one. Railroad. You see, no, no, go back. You see, I'm concrete. I'm concrete in my research and in my target. Con these are concrete skills and concrete professionals. And if we are going to have enough professionals in these areas, we can supply the world with them. And we can have Nigerians providing answers all over the world. Not just medical doctors all over the world, but skillful people. They don't have to be educated, university, but skillful. Okay, railroad construction trade, yes? Maritime, maritime construction trade. Construction health and safety trade. Health and safety, everybody just want, the people, everybody will just want to do medical doctor or nurses. Right? Health and safety, what is that? Go ahead. <laughs> Civil and structural engineering colleges. Electrical, electronics, and el electrotechnology colleges. These are all colleges that are existing in other countries. In our own place, if you have anything like that, maybe some faculty somewhere. We are talking of colleges. And there are even now, if people want to choose to go to universities, since these things are not universities, they are not even in the list to choose from. People don't even have these options. But we must have colleges like this that give them all these options. Okay, next one. Food technology colleges. Next one. Footwear colleges. We must have all those about boys. We must give them certificates for their work. Next one. Mechanical technology and trades colleges. Real estate and valuation. That, you know real estate, in, like in America, real estate, and even in Western world, real estate is a, a huge part of the economy. 
So we must raise people who are experts in it. Go ahead. Security and locks smithing. Right now what we have is just car carpenters. But we must have just security experts. People who are prepared and have diplomas for them. Certificates. Go ahead. Surveying and uh, spatial information services. Colleges like that. Who would produce these people. Go ahead. Allied health services. You know, not just doctors and nurses. But many other things that are related. Many, many things are related to things that people are not even being trained in Nigeria. Go ahead. Media colleges. Agrotechnology and farming technology. These are all schools, colleges that are supposed to be everywhere. Next one. Now, what I think about all these technical skills, schools, is to, my strategy is to start them in, the, there is something they call 6 geo political regions of Nigeria. So we we'll, you know, put some here, some in this part, some in this part, you know. So, so just make sure that everywhere, people don't have to struggle to travel abroad for, we should popularize skill centers. These are technical colleges. All these ones I mentioned, how many uh, did I mention? How many were they? Go back. 18. There's are 18 different colleges. Not just one you know, college. But different colleges in different areas. So people will have options on skill acquisition. I mean, when they know that these are university colleges or just top colleges, not just some, you know, like people in Nigeria have what they call them, polytechnic. But just have polytechnic, what is there? But these ones are concrete, you know, professions, skills you will get out of these places. So, next one. So then I have uh, my own kind of proposed training program that could include the following, an, evalu an evaluation of the problems of the nation. So just for you to have an idea of the trainings I'm going to be doing for people. Yeah, evaluation, I'm going to teach people to, you know, I told you that I'm going to give them, the, we are going to disco discover 10,000 problems of, problem of people, but I'm not just going to tell them, I'm doing, I'm going to teach people how to evaluate problems of a nation, and how to be, also discover the value systems that are wrong there. And, you know, these are just all kind of, go ahead. I will not go through them one by one. Keep on going. Yeah, so let's go, let's go ahead. Transformation of local governments. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so it's just for you to see the work I've done. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So go ahead. You see, I have every state or individually analyzed. You know, that one I gave you a run down, but just keep on going because we will not have time to calculate, no, to calculate every local government. You see, every local government is, is uh, calculated. Everyone, everyone, doesn't matter where you are from, the money involved and the calculation, all these things are done. Just keep on going, keep on going. Then I have people on ground in Nigeria who, who are traveling to every of these local governments to analyze all their situations for me. So that's where we are getting all this information from. Go ahead. That's all. Okay. Is that the end of the slide? Okay. Now put, put on the video, please. So I told you that I have, where is the video? Just put on the video. I, I told you that I have a think tank in Washington, D.C., uh, that I have my partners there. And I told you about a group that I have there that is, you know, securing the finances. Not just the finances, but the whole thing, you know, including the finances. And that the, work, the thing is working there, just working 24 hours on Nigeria and on how to make all these things real. So what I've told you right now is more my general vision you know, and estimation. But they are the team working. Now, this guy that is going to be talking to you is, uh, you, do you know, have you ever heard of Disney, Disneyland? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, Disneyland. This man was the project manager when it was being built. He's a 70-year-old guy, over 70-year-old man. So he knows about, he was employed also by China when they wanted to start their in, in, uh, revolution, their economic revolution, 
to bring all those things. So he has experience in these things. So he, you know, he, uh, he helped China with, he put how many? Ah, what was the information? He have set up in one, in, is it one million villages? They have one million something villages. That those are the things, it's, it's, they have them set up something there in China. And uh, so he's the one heading my uh, think tank group in, in America. And uh, so I, I did an, a Skype call in, the, in one of the HMTs that I did. And he was here, and he was, you know, giving. So this, one, this video is over one hour, but his own speech there is just about 30 minutes. So that's what we are going to just listen to the call, and then we are going to come back to the discussion. Something. So can you put it on, please? Yeah, no, no, you started from almost beginning, just the next five minutes. Go, go to the, go in front. No, no, just keep on, go jump from uh, the front. To have economic no, no, opportunity and uh, as back. very accurate back. that you've been working okay. for over a year now go, that's uh, to just make that. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's, let's start from here. Nigerian work and that about your commitment to our country okay, okay. make it a little bit earlier when i began to speak speak yeah yeah that's it all no, and no, so no. I was let it start from the beginning then yeah go ahead so you to help us um uh, you know i want you to help you know help me paint a picture to them about what we had, what we are putting in place regarding Nigeria and what are some of the projects and what are some of the work that we are already doing, uh, your team and the team you put together and, uh, you know, what are the kind of thing that, that I'm telling them that we are going to see a new Nigeria in our lifetime and that uh, Nigeria is going to be transformed and we, this is not just about religion but we are talking about economic transformation social transformation and national development as a whole. And so I was telling them about the team, about your team that, uh, you know, that uh, you've been working for over a year now uh, to just make Nigeria work. And that about so your they've been working on to this our my country own project and to the continent of Africa. Almost two years now. So, uh, uh, Brother John, please, here you come. You have the word. I will. You interrupt at any time you wish, Pastor. Okay. But I'll describe to you what we have developed as a vision and a plan. And, of course, it is all subject to your final agreement once we meet and go over it in detail and in, in person. I yes, cannot even go but there to see that with them see to, to what they have summary developed. summary of the vision as very accurate. That is, we are going to see Nigeria transformed in our lifetimes. Amen. <laughs> And we are going to see the kingdom of God in every one of those 750 local governments. Internet, you know. Being literally and figuratively what our vision uh, will unfold in the following way if uh, our team in Nigeria agrees with it. Yes. We will deploy teams of two people each in each of the seven, seven districts. And they will have the job to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people in that district. Uh, and it will take them five years on the average for each team to reach every person in the district. They will start with the leaders. And once they shared the gospel, once they shared the gospel, they will turn around and say, we are not here just to talk to you. We are here to help you. And we would like to know how the best we can help you, especially in light of what we regard as five very important priorities for each and every person in Nigeria. Of course, the first one is to know who Jesus Christ is and it is through him that this transformation effort is taking place. Yes. Whether they agree with us or not is immaterial. Whether they live in uh, Port-au-Court or in the nor northern provinces, 
That is of no interest. We will still take the gospel to every leader and every person in the course of this five-year period. There is a second priority then. We will say we want to help you address or to deal with the most important crises that exist within your area. Are there people who don't have clean water? Are there people who don't have adequate housing or clothing uh, or food to eat or who need a job or who are recovering from a disaster or terror wars or a conflict of any kind on the civil basis? Or are there people who are displaced and have humanitarian emergencies that must be addressed? If there are, we want to make that our first priority for being of assistance to you. The second priority is that we want to deal with what we call chronic deficits. That is civil conflict, displaced people, corruption, addiction, and other problems. And in order to do so, we not only have monetary assets that we will bring to bear to either uh, build housing or provide food or the other things, but we will also offer training. Everyone wants to do a project to help the people of Nigeria, and that is the most important thing, is to live out Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, where Jesus says, if you do this for the least of these, then you're doing it for me. So we want to reach out to the most needy people first and then work our way up the chain to those who have economic opportunities and other things that they can offer. And in that training, we will offer an eight-part training program that will take it. If, for example, a county executive or a district executive wants to do a new bridge or a new building or a new park in his community, whatever, we will say, we will let you plan that project, but we also want you to go through the training that we have that relates to this. The training will focus on the seven important parts of making the kingdom of God a reality in that community from a biblical world from Houston to God who created heaven and earth, then from the standpoint of building the economy, then from the standpoint of improving education for all to receive, then the needs of the family and what a kingdom of Jesus' family looks like, what a kingdom of God government looks like, what a kingdom of God media looks like, and lastly, what a kingdom of God church looks like. The training will cover 497 topics. It'll take 124 hours. So we basically are going to take them for a month and put them through interactive training that acquaints them the why of what we're doing and why we believe Jesus wanted to reach out to them through this effort. Our next priority is to clean up environmental disasters and modernize the infrastructure where we need to build or improve roads or clean up the water in a river, lake, stream, or harbor area uh, or clean up the air in a community. We want to provide the resources to do that and employ people who will do that work. We want the best for the people of Nigeria in what they all share as communities, rivers, waters, clean air, clean harbors, and uh, beautiful communities. And if we can meet those priorities and we have money allocated for each one of them, the last priority we'll address is to do economic development projects that are going to produce jobs and employment. There are 13 economic sectors where this work will be will take place, uh, and each province of Nigeria will have money allocated to it in each of these categories. But they must submit the projects to use that money. And if they don't, don't meet our very difficult, stringent criteria for a project that is best practices on the world standards, sustainable, produces jobs, benefits the, the people, benefits the community, 
and we'll be there 50 years from now. We're going to say work on it some more until it reaches those criteria, and when it does, we're ready to underwrite the funding. But we want projects in the agricultural area. We want projects that enrich the culture and history of each community. We want ones that do economic development. We want ones that do education, vocational training, and human capital development. We want ones that develop the energy infrastructure of the country uh, in every community, as well as at the national level. We've actually allocated money at the national level for the national power grid upgrade and for power plant modernization. The next category is in environmental cleanup. The next one you'll love, it is health care. We want to deliver the best health care that Nigeria have ever had. The best hospitals, the best community clinics, the best training for doctors to address the epidemic of cancer head on. We have a company that has a, uh, a technology for dealing with cancer that if it is currently diagnosed, that is the location of the cancer is currently diagnosed, it is 100% effective and is done on an outpatient basis. It takes less than four hours with a follow-up visit in a month to six weeks to make sure it's all gone. And we look at tragic reports of the, the incursion of cancer among the people of Nigeria, especially breast cancer for women, which are heart rending. Literally, when uh, Pastor Sunday and I talked earlier today, I was meeting with his good friend, Bishop Ticker and Millander, explaining the cancer treatment process and showing him photos of the tragedy of cancer that is untreated and undealt with. We want to transform the health situation, especially in the cancer area and across the board for every one of the 170, 200 Nigerians. The next area of support beyond that is uh, developing the manufacturing sector. Where there are existing plants that either can be reopened or modernized, we, we want to do that where there are new plants that are needed that will produce jobs all throughout country, and we've allocated money for manufacturing to every single province, we want to build those plants. Stop. Can you stop? You see what he said? The next said? area is natural resources development. It's just possible. Where there are natural resources that need to be further developed, we want to invest in doing that. Do you hear? It says we've allocated money. You know, that's what I was talking about. This area is only talking about the areas the money have been allocated for, approved. And I want you to pay attention to, maybe you to even write down, pay close attention to every area. But they cannot be released. They are not released yet. But they have been allocated. Okay, go ahead. With good enterprises, good jobs, and Nigerians controlling their resources, Ooh. not anybody else. As you know, there is a big battle underway in Nigeria for who controls the oil. There are certain countries from Asia that want to do that. And they're offering loans to Nigeria in exchange for mineral rights. We don't agree with that approach. We offer grants to Nigeria in exchange for Nigerians retaining the mineral rights all through the country. The next area of development that we envision is the rural areas. Farm communities, country roads, internet, all the things that are needed to make the rural areas as healthy economically as the cities are healthy. And uh, the next area is the services sector. We want to train people in the best practices in any one of the service industries so that Nigeria is a model for Africa in what is being done in retail, wholesale trade and all the many services that are there. 
and provide good wages for people who work in the services sector, and always that takes investment to get to that point. The next area of development is transportation. Every single province will have a budget for uh, building up its transportation infrastructure, developing new roads, uh, new bridges, and other things in addition to money that's available at the national level for transportation. The last area is urban development. That is the cities, the parks, the government structures, the infrastructure, the things that make the urban areas as appealing as they possibly can on the best standards. <laughs> We have, anyway, you're noticing what he's talking about, right? County or district of Nigeria. We've done this in other areas in what was the former Soviet Union. Offer the opportunity to the local community to do the things that are needed. They are very responsive. And where communities are not responsive, if we tell them what's going on next door in another community and what the other leaders are doing for their people, they are more interested in, in helping their own people because the publicity that's going to the next county over, the next district, is too much for them to bear when their people hear this. And the man seated in that big pink chair will be the best spokesperson for these kinds of progress and changes so that we can let everyone know this case and encourage it in every one of the 757 districts. Now there are three or four projects that are what I'll call national level projects that I'd like to describe to you briefly. And we have these already done in proposal form with our friends who are managing these things. Uh, but you should know about them. The first is a data system that all of this information from each of the districts will put into. And it will enable us to do what we call a needs assessment. So if somebody wants to come in and build an airport in a district and there's already an airport, uh, we'll expand the current airport, not build a new one and make it modern and new. But we need a system that will, will collect the data from all the teams and all the officials and all of the people who want to do projects so that they can go through a systematic development process on the projects that they want to do. That will be run on the internet. Each one of those, as well as trustees and project managers, so that we can develop the best projects possible in the fastest period of time. Now, once a project reaches the standard of being best practice, good design, effective use of money, job producing, and all the other criteria that are important, we will approve that project. It'll, it'll match the scoring criteria in the system and be then moved over to another data system that will be based out of the Caribbean and will be responsible for transferring the money to projects. This system is so sophisticated that it can even do the payroll for building a new airport in a province or district down to the level of the person doing the work on the job. So every employee not only has to go through the training, but they must have a bank account into which money is transferred as they go through each uh, pay period. It'll go directly into their uh, accounts, the reason being we are confronting corruption head on and eliminating corruption in the Republic of Nigeria in Egypt. And the best way to do that is to pay people directly, pay suppliers directly, and work with local trustees who are honest in approving that the work that's been done is exactly what was promised and that the materials furnished are what was promised. Now, an important element of these projects is that the local people should be prepared to contribute a part of the cost of the project. It can be in the form of land, 
It can be in the form of materials. It can be in the form of security. And we must have security for projects because if they allow terror groups to come in and stop a project, we will shut it down. Or if we get reports of corrupt, it will be shut so we must have local cooperation to match the resources that are being provided so that everyone has a stake in the success of that project. And when it's completed, we will have a celebration joining together the people who did the work and the people who are going to benefit from it and celebrate the outcome of that work in a very visible way and televise it all through the country so that everyone knows what's been accomplished. Another of the national projects that you'll find interesting is what we call street and highway lighting. We are basically going to take all the street and highway lighting off the national power grid and come in with a system that will not only include the most advanced liquid uh, electronic display lighting, but it will include wind power and solar power to power that lighting with batteries in each installation to support the lighting so that the power grid is not carrying any more of the public lighting and it's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And in addition, there are 140,000 kilometers of roads in Nigeria. We are going to see every one of them lit up. And on that same installation, that there is part will of be the security internet, system. Wi-Fi connections, uh, uh, security where it's needed. If it's a sensitive area, there will be free Wi-Fi. The whole country. Security problems. Uh, there will also be uh, tracking devices for sounds. If you say you have an oil port where somebody's coming to try to come in and take it by uh, force, this will even tell you where the gunshots are coming from and report it to a national command center so that it can be stopped before it starts. Now, if there's an emergency... <laughs> If there's an emergency, like a big typhoon comes in or a uh, tornado or something else, this same system will be an independent communication system to every community in Nigeria so that the president could, in one announcement, tell everyone in the country what has happened, what's being done about it, and how steps are being taken to be able to mitigate any adverse effects of any event, whether it's man-caused or weather caused or whatever it is, this doubles as a new communication system while it provides internet connection to every village, town, building, room, floor, and family. Wow. Now, uh, sorry John, could you please start that part again, the national grid uh, and the uh, electricity, the lightning of the roads, all the highways, all this last piece of our segment of the presentation, could you start again? Because we're having some challenges here a little bit. So start that afresh, please, with the National okay. Grid. There are 140,000 kilometers of roads and highways in Nigeria. We want to provide new and independent lighting for every one of those roads and highways. We also want that lighting to be powered away from the national power grid because the power grid is already overloaded with public uh, lighting requirements that it can't carry without being expanded dramatically. We do want the power generating capacity to be expanded, but we want this lighting system to be independent of the national power grid and generating capacity because we want that new capacity to be used for new industries, new jobs, new homes, and new manufacturing facilities where they're needed. And we want to use uh, wind power and solar power to power each of the poles that are carrying this lighting. Each of those poles will have what we call a Christmas tree on top of it. It'll be a concrete pole 36 feet high, uh, 12 meters, or higher in mountainous areas, 
and on top of it will be an aluminum cap that carries not only the batteries to store the power from the wind and the sun, but also the electronics to power the lighting and a communication system that will be linked up through the entire country. So it'll provide internet connectivity to every single area of the country, uh, Wi-Fi communications and emergency communications, and it will be independently powered so that if the generator plant goes out in that area, you'll still have lighting on the streets, you'll still have communications. And it can be tied back into a national command center that monitors weather, uh, other events, so that people have advance warning of any adverse events that are about to unfold and what can be done about it. So it doubles as a national communication system as well as a lighting system. We have the option of adding signage for all the roads, lit signage, and other things, but we wanted to do first the lighting uh, to make Nigeria literally the light of Africa in two ways. Not only in the character of the people, but also the lighting on a street, cities, and towns. Does that help? Yes, but you, you left out the section about, about the security. In, in, in yes. Robbery and, yeah, can you talk more a little about the security? In important areas that must be secure or are in danger of attack by outside people, whatever the cause is, we will have hidden security cameras that are not known uh, to anybody but the authorities. And we will have noise tracking devices so that any steps that are taken by terrorists or thieves or criminals, whatever, we will have it on video. And if they use weapons, we'll know what weapon was fired and where it was fired from. Uh, because I'm we have Ray. these tracking devices that will be able to isolate location and noise in that way. Wow. Wow. So that is going yes. to be, this security is going to be uh, mounted together with the lightning system and the communication system on all roads and highways. highways. Correct. Okay. The next area that we want to do work in is to demonstrate ways of cleaning up groundwater, especially where the oil companies have come in and destroyed the groundwater, the underground water, the rivers, or the streams. And we have a technology that we would like to bring over. And if it works to the satisfaction of the environmental authorities in Nigeria, we can expand its use. But we wanted to do a demonstration project in the worst groundwater conditions in Nigeria and if it restores the biological balance and the drinkability of that water, and you agree, then we'd make that technology available for use throughout the country. And the last project that we've submitted a proposal on that we think you will like is this cancer treatment project. The basic plan is to come in and train whatever doctors are interested in being involved in cancer treatment on the use of this system to provide support for them in the form of the machine that runs it and then the, to inventory the supplies that can be used to do cancer treatment throughout Nigeria, starting with breast cancer and then moving into other areas as we overcome the breast cancer epidemic that's already underway. I just gave our mutual friend, Bishop Millinder, uh, a report on the incidence of breast cancer in Nigeria, and it's tragic what has happened because people cannot get good treatment on a timely basis or good diagnosis. So we have a company in California that has developed a very reliable treatment system that we would like to enable to bring into Nigeria and use Nigeria as the springboard for cancer treatment throughout Africa once it's demonstrated there and accepted. Now, these are hard things to implement in areas where doctors want to earn a lot of money or they want to put you on chemotherapy that costs a 
cost many thousands of uh, U.S. dollars and other things. So we are basically working around them to provide a low-cost, highly effective treatment system that uses what's called cryoablation. That is, a needle probe goes to the area of the cancer. It's detected by a sonogram. And the needle probe is positioned right in the middle of that cancer tumor, and then it freezes that tumor for a stipulated period of time and then gradually unfreezes it so that all the cancer cells are killed and absorbed into the bloodstream and then the, the needle is withdrawn. So it's a four hour treatment. It requires a band-aid on the area where the needle was inserted and the patient leaves on the same day they came to the doctor's office and they don't have to take anything except a uh, a painkiller for a half a day and then they come back and get it checked after a month. It is so good that we want the people of Nigeria to benefit from it as a part of this. So that gives you a sort of an overview and the man seated in that uh, beautiful chair at the head of the room has ideas that go far beyond ours, but we want to know that... Uh, We can help him and help you to succeed. We are interested in seeing that occur and then celebrating the results together. Any questions? Okay, so from the hall. Okay, that's all. That's what you need to hear. Now we are going to open this to our own discussion. So you can put on the light. Yeah, so we can come close and let's go around and can I have a share? I'm going to sit here and Professor and Otumba will come and sit with me. So here we are, and um, I hope the people, okay, for, uh, the people on the Facebook are asking questions, how can they be part of this? And the first part also, uh, Julia and team, you did not provide them with the information how they could be part of Nigerian Transformation Team, uh, which is, uh, go to Sunday Adelaide blog, Sunday Adelaide blog dot, uh, com slash Nigeria, sundayatelajablog.com slash Nigeria. Uh, they can go and, you know, read the information they are enjoying if they want to. And we need to write that in the former first part as well and now. And anybody who wants to be, a, uh, you know, a part of this or want to inquire some things, you could just go to that place, sundayatelajablog.com slash Nigeria. Okay, here you are. You people are here, the interaction section. But, you know, you can ask your questions. So any one of us, but maybe before then, maybe, uh, you know, Dr. Arams or uh, Otumba might like to say something while you are getting your questions ready. And I think somebody should be reading the comments as well, in case anybody would like to ask some questions from the audience uh, that are watching from all over the world. You want to contribute here? Yeah. So um, it is overwhelming, isn't it? Yes. yes. If you have not heard of this before, and hearing it for the first time is very overwhelming because it's, um, it's, it's a real transformation project that when implemented, it will just raise the bar of the country. And so it is not like the normal stories you hear or political gimmick or what people, you know, normally, uh, you know, people come, come out with the idea, but the idea is not really visible. They just come out with something, and even the common man knows that this is not going to work. <laughs> but this is detailed, detailed, and detailed. Anybody that has run a project before knows that this is a well-detailed plan that is going to work, isn't it? Yes. yes. So I am excited, and I am sure that you are excited, and a lot of people are excited about it. Because basically Nigeria has suffered so much. And all of us here and everybody back home, if they wake up every morning, 
you know, they look at the situation, they wonder why are we here? Why is the situation like this? Because everything can be different, and it could be different. So that people, great minds, have not been allowed to contribute to the system. So finally, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased with what uh, Dr. Sunday has put together, and I'm glad that I'm a part of this team, you know, and I am ready to contribute everything I can within my lifetime to see that this project <laughs> succeed. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very and much, Doc. So it has yes. a lifetime commitment. Uh, thank you, everybody. Again, the, the, this question I want to pose is very, very critical. It's very, very important. And we need to start to be very honest with ourselves. If anybody, and again, anybody among us here, having listened to this kind of presentation, the pitch, everything said here, if we are still having doubts, because I can understand. If anybody see having that say, hello, are we going to have good trains? Things like run like that in Japan? Is it possible? When, as we speak, it's still the same gouge from Edo. When I was growing up, Edo Tamina, I, used to, I mean, we used to be very proud. Seeing our girlfriend off today, they're going to Kano. A lovely place. It looks like uh, Victoria Station, not as big. Today, it's like, uh, it's better to use the headsman to get the little grass around that uh, beautiful site before. So, it's acceptable, it's understandable. If any of you or any of us still having problem or doubt, you know, do you understand what I'm saying, sir? Yeah. I can understand. It's our duty, it's our job it's to, to, to take you guys more into it because he talked about uh, replication of uh, 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 mass recruitment of people that are already going to be we are going to so so with all due respect before you continue yeah I, let me just bring bring some illumination into that question of rail, railroads for example are we going to have railways and railroads like in japan your uncles i mean your cousins sir Dr. Shorunke, he might be watching right now. Yes. He got some people together in California, and he got involved. He got himself keyed into United States program to pro build rail station in Nigeria. This is a five billion dollar project, and the government were ready. American government was ready to finance it. This man left his medical practice in America, went to Nigeria for about two months to stay there, went with the top, uh, the leading railway construction engineer in California who was a Nigerian. They went there together. They got everything ready. They took white Americans and black Americans with them who were, who were interested in executing the project. But when they got to, and he knew somebody to introduce him to the powerful men in Lagos, and you know Abu and Abuja, so they were ready to build everything with special concentration for Nigeria. Everything was ready. They are going to the money was ready, but the Nigerian politicians in Lagos said, "We will sign the papers, one million only. One one million for our Oga, and one million for us to share." But the Americans said, "We will not release that one million." And Dr. Shorunke said, I don't have my own two million in my own pocket that I could have used for that. Because these people, they, the money they release is only for projects. They don't release money for, so they kill that. But, but, in fact, Dr. Shorunke had me to speak to the chief engineer that went with him. So I said, okay, we will not even, you know, we, we have to go around it because we are going to go another way. So, so you know, so I have my own strategy on how to resolve that kind of problem, but that's just to answer the question, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I also want to chip in a little bit about that. He, he woke, my cousin woke me up in the middle of the night. There's eight hours delay, eight hours delay. Yes, sir. And he said, Uncle, Uncle Body, and I said, yes. So this is what is going on. Uh, this is how far they've gone. And I, is going to be a testimony if, if he can call in. And I said, please do not do it, because we're, we're dealing with a situation. If I had to give this madam, who is supposed to put her, you know, append her signature on this project, 
99% of the time, the project will not move, will not fly. And I'll tell you why. If you buy it, and that's why today, the amount of abandoned projects, the amount of problem we have is uh, well, it's, uh, about 97% due to corruption. Is due to corruption. So, and I, I, I said, do not do it. Because I can tell you, that guy that's going to collect one million, yeah, the second possible available flight, he will fly out and go. He might not even come back. Because all this generation has not earned 100 million naira. No, no, talk of uh, four times, uh, 470 times uh, one million. And he was quite happy and said, well, I don't, I, I don't even have that kind of money. So that is just to say thank you again for bringing that addition or something. Now, from my side here, I want to deal with people, any of us here, because we see you, we're looking at everybody here as soldiers. Here we have a general. But we want to be sure, we want to put it in our head that we know this is possible. For those of you who are having doubt, for those raise of your hands. Think, raise no, your hands. Please. Speak. Speak Generally, out. if I don't see anybody listening, I just believe all of you are just not serious. There must be one or two among us. Let us be real. You, you're looking at or that. Or maybe on the internet. Yeah, you're looking at that. Is 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 massive. But you know what many people do not understand? When you look at government of America, government of Germany, all the successful governments all over the world, they are the biggest employer of what? Labor. Labor. Many people do not know what labor is not only cleaning of the streets. That you and I live in the West and we benefit and we enjoy basic facilities of life. It's because some people are working on them. And they are in millions. They are in millions. It's huge. So for me, this is small project. When you look, it's small project. Compared to what the, the Compared to the what the people working in the, in the Navy in America, people working... In, in the MI5, MI6, in UK, other countries, in Sweden, a large number of people are working. Not to even talk of the ordinary people uh, 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 steering the train and so on. So it's a small project. And let uh, me also um, inform you why this is possible. If you have studied the history of Europe, you will know that after the Second World War, Europe was destroyed. Every country, not just one country in mm. Europe. Every one of them was destroyed totally. Then there was this project that was introduced from America called the Marshall, the Marshall, yeah, Marshall Plan. Yeah. Nah, so the Marshall Plan is similar to what you are saying here. But the Marshall Plan was for every country in Europe, like 50 countries almost, mm. the Western countries. And they were able to, in the next 10 years, you know, just raise up the whole country again. But now, the Europe, Europeans didn't have the issues that we are going to be having with mindset and the value system. But all these infrastructural things, all these things, the, it's it, America alone helped them to do it. And some of the people that are working in my own, that guy, that is just the head, the people in the team, some of them worked, he himself participated in the Marshall Plan for Europe and for China. So they know exactly what Marshall Plan is about and what to do to really make things come about in Nigeria. So we are working on it. And it's not just me alone. I'm just the guy they know, I'm just the guy there, you know, that is, uh, in, you know, I'm the Nigerian there. They have the vision. That's yeah, the I'm reality the here. Yeah. Because so far up to now, we are dealing with visionless leaders. That's the truth. People who does not know how their bedroom, how their uh, backyard and also sort of things should look like, how a hall and all that kind of thing. Because if you don't have that kind of vision, know exactly what you want, what kind of jacket, what kind of whatever you want to be, it's going to be very difficult to lead others. So if you have somebody who has that kind of vision, uh, the, best, the, the worst we can do is to embrace. That's the worst we can do. Frank so is, I want Frankly you. speaking, let me tell you another thing which I've never told the people. This team of people, especially those who are going to solicitate for the money, every one of them, they were always saying the same thing. They were saying, we are, we are approving this project because they are presenting the project mm -hmm. in my behalf. Who is the head? Is he going to be the president? They said, no, it is not, it's a pastor. He's not interested, but we believe in him. They said, but, oh, if you all believe in him like this, if you, had, if you, if you had, had agreed to be the president, it would have been a good thing. We would have been more relaxed. But you see, I say, it's not about president. We want to do this thing, not as a political thing at all, but we want to use the power and the force of, of zealous people, ambitious people. You know, you know what's the word we are using? 
not not passionate. What's the word? Obsessed, obsessed people. You know, you know, fanatic people about restoring their country in a generation. And they were saying, then you people have to believe and pray that God will bring responsible because political people will see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, one second. Okay. Yeah, yes. So to quickly say this, please search your soul. If you think it's not for you, the best thing I've done in my life when I, before I retired, is sales. I'm too good in sales. I tell you, there's nothing I cannot <laughs> sell. I'm not, I'm not really bragging. There's nothing I cannot sell. Before I went to study law at the age of 49, I, uh, double window salesmanship is the most difficult thing in the UK. But if, you, if I give you an appointment and I come into your house, I might not live until you know, the second day. I will Ooh, sell that wow. window. Wow. Because there are 13 I mean, lines of uh, pitch. You have to follow it. So again, please, I want us to deal with the issue of is it possible or is it not possible? Because we want to rely on everybody here to at least start with the, we are looking for how many thousands of people, so we have this minimum. <laughs> we want to make sure that at least each of us can start a project. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, madam. Let, let me get you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, just two issues that I want to raise, sir. Number one is, you were telling us about the role. Okay. Yes. You were telling us about the role uh, project that, that, that got, um, disrupted by, because people were asking for bribe. Are you kind of along the government uh, with this project? Because there's no issue about, is it too big? It's, it's a reality, it's going to be done. But is there, is there uh, are you kind of along the government so that when you get there, there won't be anybody asking for bribe and this? Then the other thing is that a uh, professor in Mafedon said this morning, that, um, or this afternoon, that technology, you can do everything by technology now. You can do anything from any part of the world. Is there any way that you can remain here and your other people can go and start the project. Yes, but they will not release the money. Okay, okay. You know, okay. they need to, yeah, that's what the way. That's just the way they are put. It's okay. not about technology. Okay. It's about okay. the money. Okay, okay. You know, okay. without the money, anybody can start a project, but without money, you cannot do anything. Okay, okay. okay. That's the bottom line. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, but concerning the first question. Exactly, I want to see. Yeah, okay. okay. Concerning the first question about the uh, bribe. The bribe, that's a big question. But I've dealt with that a lot here in Ukraine. So God has helped me. So, and I think God got the right person because I'm prepared for that one. So first of all, we, I have two advantages. Yeah, one is the fact that, you know, with, in the case of Dr. Shoroke, he needed the permission and all that because they were working with the government. So, you know, they needed the government of America, needed the government of Nigeria to sign this thing. So because they were building that, the whole structure, the whole... Uh, net, network of train station is a government project in Nigeria. And without government, I think you need government permission. So for, for, for us to go to begin to do that kind of thing, I would not do the way it's done. He's just come with, from America with, you know, people, businessmen who want to do it and government, they want to release money, but I would not do that first. For, before I get to the stage of those kind of projects, I will be working, I will be doing the first stage of the work which I think is the most important one, which is the civil society, NGO, you no know, people preparation of people, raising up of individuals, doing massive uh, you know, grassroots preparation of people, you know, the, 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 the tedious work of getting the mind of people ready, you know, preparing a thousand people every week to do the, you know, I will be, that is, without that, if you don't have the people force and the people power who are fanatics and who have been, whose mindset has changed and whose value system has changed in their thousands, which you, don't even, you don't even start doing projects like that. So what I've done in Ukraine is that each time I want to push any project, for example, I wanted to stop pornography, showing pornography here in this country. And I, I needed... I needed I re, they were the owners of the television, and they are sitting in the parliament there. So how can you stop photography and showing of you know things when the owners are the ones in parliament? They are the ones to vote for against it. <laughs> they will not. That's how they are making them. They will not vote against their own. How they get what gives them money? But because of our moves, because of our presence everywhere, and because we had released the army of 
uh, NGOs and social activists and people everywhere. So we just arose one day and said, you know, this is going to be done. And then we went and, you know, besieged the parliament. And they, 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 they were not going to go out of the parliament until the thing is done. And then that is one. So we resolved that. They, we got that done. Then another thing we wanted to change in Ukraine was we wanted to, there is something they call tramadol. Tramadol is kind of drug. It's like a state, you know, they were selling and the government is supporting the sales of the or that. So we said, no, we are, we are going to stop the, stra I mean, the sales of this drug in the country. So we took people out and for two weeks and we could afford it. We, all, the, all, all our people that were, you know, they didn't know that, but I'll tell you the secret. We have like 300 uh, rehabilitation centers in, in the country. So in all those 300 rehabilitation centers, at the point, you have at least 2,000 to 5,000 people being rehabilitated. So we just took 2,000 of them. We just put them there every day and put tents. <laughs> <laughs> For all of them. So instead of them being there, we just put them in the street. So <laughs> yes, I will declare hunger strike. And then the parents of those uh, drug addicts came and joined. So we had about 5,000 there. For by the time the president said that two weeks, 5,000 people had said, ah. He just said, okay, let's meet, then stalk. <laughs> then let's dialogue. <laughs> and so we know how to put, I know how to get things done, believe me. That's why I, God has probably allowed me to go through this country. I've done it. So I know how to get things done with politicians. I know how to, you know, because, for example, one of the things I'm going to do in Nigeria, let's say I want to do that train station because I have masses. And I have all these people, you know, for example, it's not just going to be individuals, you know, like two, two, um, two million people coming out. They are going to be social, civil society groups also. So, you don't, can you imagine that they, they are not just going to sign paper that 1,100 10, uh, civil society groups are supporting this. They are going to be 10,000 civil society groups from every state and every local government. You are in trouble. Every government, then we are going to say, we want to, we are going to tell the truth. The truth is going to win. We have, this is the paper. We have signed this contract with the American government. We want to do the re re railway station. And your people, your government, this is the name of the person who said we're not, they will tear him. They will tear him. They will tear him at peace. Apart, strong, you know, they will just tear them. If anybody is in trouble that will de deal with me, I bet you. You know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an old, rugged wa warrior in that sense here. You know, I know exactly what to do. So for me, it's not a challenge. Yes, sir. Since you are the engineer and the pilot, and with the testimonies we are hearing from you, I believe we are getting charged right now and ready to move. But is there any way we can come in to support you in this situation whereby your release can be a bit, a bit faster? A bit? From you, you play. Yeah. Okay, sir. That's a good question, and many people have been challenging, I mean, to asking me how they could help. Now, you know, I know some powerful people all over the world, too. But, you know, that's something very funny about the Western people, too. Can you imagine it, that? I know some names. I, I've mentioned, I could still mention, but no need. I know a lot of them. But whenever a doubt comes on your reputation, this is how the West is, so, unfortunately. So there is a doubt on your reputation. They want to wait and see if you are going to be. Yes, I, I, can, I, can, I can answer the question. Yeah, that's the way they reason. Yes. So they, do, they will not you, you know, use something to come and help oh. you, so to say. No, they want to find out. Are you really guilty or not? Yeah. Uh, Even if they believe in you, but they will still want the law to take his... Uh... Yeah. Uh, we, we have a case in the UK. I mean, you will hear that uh, a, a former cabinet minister who drove over the red light or something, or crossed, yeah, yeah. crossed the red light, <laughs> and got caught. He got caught, and uh, he thought the best way to do it is to uh, use the details of a former of ex-wife, yeah? yeah. They, they was even still not married. And they cooked it up, and at the end of the day, uh, after a long period of time, the truth came out that, um, and the, the wife is a very powerful policy maker. She, she was in the cabinet. A very, very powerful policy maker of the country. Cut a long story short, 
they both went to jail. Oh! Yeah, I don't know if anybody can. Yeah. 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 Whoa. So, so <laughs> what uh, uh, Dr. Sunday is so, saying here is really, it happens, uh, and that is what we are trying to achieve. You see, once we are able to install, I call it software on all my presentations on television, uh, if you uh, want to reformat a microphone. If you want to re uh, reformat the computer and then you want to put a new, you must put a new software in it anyway. But then the software will not last unless otherwise you install what? There's something I want to, uh, another Bi antivirus. Anti the, 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 the settings, the structure in Europe only works smoothly on the basis, on the foundation of rule of law. As you can see, they don't go to church. They don't go to mosque, yes. they don't fast, they don't, they don't ask pray. for voodoo, they don't ask anything, but they believe that rule of law is the only thing that will get them going. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's happening. But I quickly want to uh, say something funny. I'm not surprised that the Ukraine government does not want him to go. Yeah, even though he can be easily medicated tomorrow. But they haven't, they tap him into so many things. He doesn't even realize it. You do, he doesn't realize his worth. And that is a problem. And that is the truth. I'm willing to speak at the uh, uh, center of uh, uh, Kiev tomorrow and say, you know what? You are holding on to this guy because you are taking a lot. You are gaining so many things. How many countries in Europe have been able to ban pornography via one? So there are so, many other, there, there are so many other things that this government of this country, and we might, oh, I'm, and I told him this afternoon in one of the many sessions, that we'll work on it. Yes. Because at the end of the day, uh, there's another country, uh, Ukraine, part, used to be part of Russia. Russia They've yeah. developed, they, they've gone back. Uh, when the Pastor Hugo was bringing me yesterday, I said, in fact, in the evening time I saw the, the airport, and I said, hello. We might be asking Ukraine to come and build that airport. Because virtually, as we speak, you have nothing. So that might be a plus, but don't worry, it's, it, again, <laughs> that might be one of the reasons. Thank you. Sir. So uh, we, we, we need more people. I, to I will add to that. Yeah. So that is on one hand of it. That is the natural part of it. But as a spiritual person, let me just tell you the truth. Before last year, I was thinking, ah, God, you are the God of truth, God of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, even let's even assume that human beings don't know the truth. But you are, I know the power of truth and, and I teach on truth. I know that you are always on the side of truth. Ah, truth which will be fighting for me and, so you know, do you know the truth? Even if everybody, even if the whole world say, you know, I am guilty or I did something wrong. But you know the truth now. So why won't you have vindicated? We are not talking about five months, one month, six years. We are talking about nine years now. I'm not going to ten. So I've, that has been my biggest source of personal pain. That where is God look? Where is God? What is He looking? Where is He looking? At least He knows that I am I'm pure in all the things they are accusing me of. So why is He not silent? Why is He not intervening? But by the grace of God, God had mercy on me this year. So this year, I started mm, in June. I stopped in January, and then I started in June my live broadcast again. And when I started this other live broadcast I started doing, the attacks that were coming at me, I started with uh, prostitution of Titan offering. You know, what people are, they are prostituting Titan offering. Then I went to, is your church a cult? Then it's truth, then, you know, all different kind of things. Yeah, paganism. So the attacks that were coming at me from Nigeria. I mean, people were telling me they were ready, they, anyway, they were taking my pictures to places, uh, you know, to calling my names, uh, you know, or just all kind of things, sending me warnings and you know, ready to send assassins if necessary. So just because I'm touching there something, so then. It was then my, I then discovered that, ah, this, your, this God, eh? You are wise, oh. Because, can you believe it? 
I just, ah! So this God is strategical. Then I began to, but God didn't tell me this five years ago because I didn't even know there was going to be any live broadcast when I was fighting the thing. So when I was wrangling in pain, that why is it that God is not vindicating me? I didn't know that I was even going to start a project like live broadcast. Talk less of knowing the reactions of people. So it was now when this situation now came, then God now spoke to me and said, you see, this is why I'm still keeping you here. I need to keep you here until the message you are preaching now goes before you. Because you know that is the mental transformation. The mental transformation. Mindset, value system, transformation, change of value system, enlightenment is the most important. Without that, there is no need for all these other things. No need for all these other things. So this message has to go before me in Nigeria. Overcome the, the terrain, you know, it has to saturate. We have to have a lot of uprising. People are rising in support, championing that, no, we are not going to settle and agree. Now, when I have that kind of support, massive support ahead of me, I will be ready to go. Then I will be indestructible. You know, it will be impossible to just, be, you know, I don't know. Right now, even the ones who I am defending, I'm trying to set free from those Cabals, both religious and political, cabals, they are the ones right now who want to destroy me. Even maybe even not the cabals, the people who believe in them so much. But that belief they have in them has to first of all be diluted. As they have to see my motive and see that I'm, you know, for them. And you know, so the world has to go and be believed and accepted by them. If I just go without any support on the ground like that, I'll be walking on the minds on the minefield. You know, so I see God's wisdom. It's not that God cannot do something to let me go, but it will be a little bit premature. Because especially God knowing my passion and my zeal, and I'm very impulsive to some extent, God needed to manage that for me. I don't know if you people are getting... Yes. So I think, because God is almighty, I think it's over the situation. That's what I'm thinking. I think he's ruling over the situation. Oh, and I think he knows. And I think God's time is, might still be the best anyway. Even though we see the need that is urgent, but because he is God, I think he might know some things that we might not totally understand yet. Of course. <laughs> Um, mine is not a question. What I want to um, say is, is it possible that we can create a system while he's still here and set up like a group in Nigeria? You know, people start registering, apart from training, you know, create, I don't know what we're gonna call it, whatever movement. People will start registering online, joining, or having from different- No, we have that going on. We have over 2,000 people already registered. From like 50 countries who want to go with us to Nigeria. No, 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 no. In, ah. You know, people on ground, we're trying to prepare the army in Nigeria. Youth. In Nigeria whoever. itself. You in trust Nigeria people in, in Nigeria? No. I find that difficult. No, no, no. We start registering. Whoever okay. joins us, we just create a system. Okay, whatever you, program we're calling. One of the system that you didn't see there mm. that we created is that when I go to Nigeria, or before I come, but when I'm ready to go, what we, want, we want to do newspaper advertisement. So every state, every state in Nigeria. And we want to recruit, for example, uh, want to just throw it out there and say, we want to do training for everybody that is ready, that wants to see Nigeria transform and is ready to pay the price for it. That's the way it is. We are giving you scholarship for training and we are going to feed you three days a week and we are going to give you stipend. But we, are going to, we want to recruit 1,000, 400,000 people. And we are going to be recruiting from every local government. Let's say from every local government, we'll have like 100 people. But, you know, we are going to do interviews and a lot of all that screening. Are they, but our greatest criteria is that we want to find people who are ready to die for Nigeria. So we are going to recruit all those people. But we are going to do massive 
as exercise. So by the time we recruit from every local government, why is it? Because all these projects that we are talking about, we want to have 100 projects in every local government. Can you imagine? So we need die-hard kind of people from every local. We will not be sending Yoruba people there, but we will need everybody from every local government but that we are going to now train with our own power. That, that's where we're going to have our database. You know, with people, getting people in Nigeria is not difficult, though. We are going to get people. But what is the essence of getting them registering when they are not changed? They are going to be registered out of their greed. They are going to be led by their greed. They are going to, it is their greed that will be. You are saying, just go and register there. Ah, something is coming. Ah, me, I will be there. It's... <laughs> So the, the thing that will drive them will be greed, but what we want them to be driven by sacrifice. And we have to do screening for them. And then they, those people who pass our screening and our stringent screening and who pass our training, they are now the ones that will go and champion all the things we are talking about. But I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I'd like to chip in a bit here. You know, all of you are Bible students. Uh, I guess you remember the story of when Jesus fed, fed uh, the 5,000 people. And then what happened the next day? <laughs> <laughs> they, all came, they all came back because they wanted to have free food. Yes, yeah, so, uh, but their heart was not there. You know, the illustration Jesus Christ was trying to give them, the understanding was not there. So they all came back for food again. So that is the type of situation you don't want in, in Nigeria. Because in Nigeria today, you know, we have done it in a different field. That we just announce, say, okay, this is going on here. Everybody will just come, you know, because people want to benefit. They will ask you, what is it for? Free food. Free, free food, free everything, okay? But um, that is why the, it is very important that the mindset is changed. It is, not, it is not so that initially the mindset of everyone is going to be changed or these people are going to be changed, but there is what we call the willingness yeah. to embrace change. Mm. You see, those who are willing to embrace change. Those are the ones we are looking for. Yes. There are a lot of people who just love the way things are in Nigeria. They love the chaos. Those ones, they will be the last ones that come along. They will be mm, dragged along. Yeah. But the first group of people you need are the ones who are willing to accept change, who are tired. They are really tired and, you know, of the suffering, and they are willing to sacrifice something for it, sacrifice a great deal of what they have, for, for the liberation. And those are the ones you need. And I have seen some of those, and I have co had contact with some of those online, people who write me daily telling me, oh, we are tired, we are tired, we are tired. What can we do? You see, there are people who are waiting for action, but it has never been such a comprehensive program. Although we have recommended something to the government, we have sent proposal, we have to mobilize people, citizens, to action. But nobody's willing to mobilize citizens to action until today, until now, until this pro project that is, that is going on and is going to start in Nigeria. So it's going to be a, 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 you know, a paradigm shift of the people that is going to take place in Nigeria. And you know our people, eh? They call them follow, follow. Okay? <laughs> so once you have a set of people who are doing that, and it becomes a new coup. So everybody says, ah, you join them. Okay, make I come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, Mrs. Abiola, you know, I'm, I feel that it's not a question that you might have, and not just you and all of you, but contribution. Maybe you want to tell us your feelings and your you know, what you are feeling after seeing this little, uh, this, uh, this, yeah, presentation. What is going on in your heart? What is, what are you feeling? Yes, sir. Please, can you face that side? Yes, I, I just still believe that the mindset is the number one thing. Yeah, the most important. If people are, if their mind is changed, if uh, their minds are changed, and then they are ready, they will follow. They will follow and they, they will understand why, you know, whatever we bring, we have meaning to them. So before we start giving them food, I think the mind must be changed. Value system. Yeah, value system. And then we can start educating them and then bringing food so yeah, that they can stay.
Um, I, the, pre the, the presentation that we just got was beautiful. I've never seen a detailed um, presentation on how things can change in Nigeria. I mean, I was a little bit skeptical before, but when I saw that, I knew it was possible. And I believe that we have the right pilot captain the, 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 that can lead us there. Uh, the only thing I believe is that um, they are still going to be the doubters. They are still going to be, I, I do believe that if we can have uh, maybe a maybe a, f a f complete detailed presentation where we where we he goes through all the slides and and present it to the people because people are people are watching i have people i mean even writing me now that oh I, I, we're, we're watching i have people in canada people everywhere watching so i believe that if we can keep this discussion going on and having having a complete detail because you just want to win the heart of the people, and we're just trying to lay the groundwork so that when we get there, that um, that everything is set, and then we can move with speed. Okay. Yes. yes. So I'm actually going to sit down first. New generation. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So you mentioned that um, regardless of you know, how the leaders will react, you're still gonna go around them to do it. So my question is, how do you think they're going to, like, what do you think they're gonna do? What actions do you think they're gonna take? Like, will they be happy that, you know, someone else is doing all the work for them? And, you know, or will they be um, angry? Because they're basically losing money, in a sense, you know, due to the fact that they won't be um, receiving money from corruption, poverty, embezz embezzlement, and all, and all those other factors. So how do you think that these leaders are going to react when, because we're practically invading <laughs> the, their country and we're basically taking the power from them and doing what they should have been doing. So my question is, how do you think they're going to react? Thank you for this very, very good question. These are the area I expect people to, to comment on. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you totally, because um, like Riley said, uh, these are people whose main preoccupation, their hallmark, <laughs> uh, and, and, and they do it very nicely. And the only one thing they do is that they, 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 they have achieved one goal, and the only goal is that uh, they are able to uh, bring what they, they work on the uh, you know the, the senses of the people. So what we are planning to do is to bypass that, yeah. to work in Brilliant. such a manner. Brilliant. Yeah, we we want to work in such a manner that uh, we will not touch them. We will not even get them Brilliant. to understand Brilliant. what we are doing. Brilliant. Because time will catch up with them. Otumba got it exactly. You understand me? The the, the it's going to be a time, and when you look at most of the museums, I don't know how many of you that uh, study history? Most of the museums in most of Western European countries are, are properties of people who stole the commonwealth <laughs> of the people. You can, you can Google it, you can find out. Most of them, the big, big houses you see, at one time belonged to those thieves, the thieves. Yeah. the bourgeoisie. Yeah. And uh, the first uh, king of uh, is France, Napoleon. He said all this thing before, that the best way to keep people, to keep themselves in government is keep your people in permanent poverty. Then you can, you know, yes, we will bypass them. We will get people. And as the uh, doc said, we are going to radicalize people, like uh. Boko Haram did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? We are going to radicalize people. Because if you don't get them radicalized, get them to uh, change the, their uh, opinion about governor. Because a large number of people are waiting for crumbs. They don't even want the main part of the, uh, of the, of the, of the bite. They just want something like, uh, you understand me? Crumbs. So we will not go their way. Their way will not be our own way. And I tell you something, again, like I said, I'm not very religious. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that when we have a group of people, or when we have a genuine visionary leader who is going to lead this kind of a crusade, who is going to lead this kind of war, 
You understand me? No military war, not terrorists or anything. You understand? People will follow because yeah. people say, when the people are really ready, yeah. who will emerge? The teacher. The teacher. Yeah. The teacher will emerge. People will come. We, we cannot sit down and say we, we, are, uh, we are operating on the belief that it will not happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> and like my doctor friend said, when we start, it's going to be a, a kind of roller coaster. It's going to be like a dominion, you know? Yeah. They, they will come. Trust me. Because, you know what? There are so many people out there in Yaba, in Sulere, in Maiduguri, in places that are sick and tired. And I said before, this is the best time because they have been beaten many times over. Microphone. Yeah, uh, they've been beaten many times over. And then, then somebody came, uh, some people came last uh, two years ago and said, we are going to create change. And they have not gotten the change. Yeah. And now we're not coming again. Don't forget that these people, they will not go away. They will always be in Nigeria. Yeah. All they were looking for is transformation uh, 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 agenda, transformation committee, transformation commission, transformation uh, people. As I say, Ega, well, let's try them again. Oh. And this time around, we will be genuine. We are really genuine in our course. Yeah. And this is also key. This is the selling point. The selling point for APC was we are going to change. Within three months, I put my, I put my name, my career, and everything online. For those who know me on media, I did so much thing. But again, today, I can say to Gwari and to his face, I say, you know what? You have only one more chance. The, the next two years, reform yourself, get yourself, detach yourself from all these hooks. Yeah. I'm sure, but it's going to be very difficult yeah. because they're already soaked in that. So I don't know whether I've answered your question, but I'm trying to tell you that we will bypass them. We will find a way of getting our own people. Do not, our own people will come. They piston people who are genuine. They will come, they will join this uh, movement, and they will make it happen. Yes. We're not going to get everybody. Yes. You understand me? There are still some people that will hide on to, oh, by the time they release my brother from jail, the money he stole, the money they hide in their uh, 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 backyard, we will share. I will add to that. Yeah? Uh, uh, Have I? Yes. Yeah, I yes. Let me, let yeah? me. Can, uh, yeah? can, I add, can I add yeah, to that, it, that, that first question? The, the addition that I will add to that is that, you know, uh, when we get there, when we begin to come, they will be laughing at us. Their pride. I just know. I just just know how people will behave. Their pride that they, ah, they will be saying things like, there have been many people like him before who have spoken. Nothing worked. So it's not, I mean, I mean, he doesn't know where he's coming to. This is not Ukraine. No. This, is not, <laughs> this is not Europe. Oh. You know, let him come. We, they will be betting and they are very sure that we will fail. So because of that, that pride, they will, you know, what do you call it? That arrogance will cause them to be, is it complacent towards? Mm, yeah. 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 It will bring them complacency that will not make them to be able to do anything to stop us. Mm. And then they are also going to be, you know that story of the frog, the best way to cook a frog? So put it in the warm water and put that warm water into the, on the stove, on the, on the stove. yeah. And then you put the, something gradually, the heat, the gas, gradually, it's cooking, and it's getting warm, and it likes it. It will not jump out, though, because it's not, if it's hot, it will, it will just jump out. But if it's just warm, it gets used to the first initial warmth, and that's what his mind has recorded. But when it's getting hotter, he doesn't even notice it. He just he recorded that first initial. So what they will record is the first initial, that, the fact that we have not acted. Because what we are going to do when we get there is that we are going to do nothing. In their own estimation, it is nothing. Because we are not going to have effect at first. Because what we are going to be doing is just talking to people, talking. Training. training. We call it training. But they are just, and they are not seeing any effect. Nothing is strengthening them at first. Nothing is strengthening them. So they think, ah, it's just something. But which is good for us. Let them, let them underestimate us. And let them say that we are not going to do anything. We are failures already. So, but by the time we are through, our people are just, we, we are busy with another thing, getting people's mind ready and getting as many of them equipped as possible. Now, what will begin to happen is, by the time they begin to notice us, they will now come and say they want to use us. That will be their next step. They will come out 
and begin to see the little, little moves that we begin to make, the difference that we are making. This, ah, some people from there, because some, some people from their communities will begin to tell them that, ah, they have started a microfinance bank. Oh. Ah, they have renovated that school. Oh. They will then become, begin to come to us and say, this is my constituency. I am the representative here. I am the something there. Let's partner so that we will give you the uh, permission and the freedom and so on. But you, you know, you know, you are not political something. We will take the credit. Basically, they will just say, let us take the credit. You, you know, run, run the term. Use your money. They, you know, and they will be taking the credit. And see, they will be then also, the next thing is that they will discover that since we don't have political ambition and we don't want to compete with them, they will say, okay, let's partner. So they will now be telling the people that we are together. Yes. They are our people. And they will be using us. Which is, we, we, were, we are going to be very tolerant as well, initially. Let them say anything they want to say, but just let the work go on. We are not going to argue with them and say, don't use us or something. Yeah. No, we want to use us. Use us. But we are going to get the work done. But then we we'll also use them because since they are seeing that they are using us and they are, it's in their interest to also help us get some things done. That's the way we are going to approach it. Then, but it is the, the, things, the things I spoke about, like having the detectives and having the you know, detectives and the secret services and the law, lawyers. And so that, those are going to come into force we're at the point when we're already powerful. Mm. Not powerful in politically, but powerful on mass. When we already have a critical mass of people that are ready to die. And when we already have, you know, all our 10,000 uh, NGOs represented in every local government. When we already know that at least 30, no, millions of people are backing us up. And they know us. And they are ready to defend us. So it is only that point we begin to say demand for things to be done and you begin to use it. So a lot of things that I see that we are going to use. We will not be very different in yeah. this form of shape. Yes, sir. And I want to also share this with you guys. Many people do not know the, 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 the crave, the urgency to change, for change, is more privileged, more pronounced in the north. Yes. I say this with all full whatever. There are few northerners. They are they are so powerful. And they are, they because they they finished uh, the University of my degree, University of Saria, blah blah. So many universities there, and they are, they are, they are highly motivated. They are highly educated, and they have no job. And they are sick and tired of their feudal leaders. You know, they genuinely looking. So when they see this kind of project, doc. Oh. oh, and again, I want to go back to the massive the size of this project. There are two people that have organized Million Man, Man March in, in the world. How, who are these people? Who can give me one name? Thank you. And one more person. Who started it? Martin Luther King. So you can imagine the amount of work they put into it. So the, 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 the last, these two people are going to be the last. So uh, we can also have, uh, I'm not trying to patronize anybody here, uh, Sonia Adelaide could also be another one. It is how history are made. Am I making sense? Yeah. So we can do it, but this fear do not have that fear. We expect you to bring two or three or five people on board, your own can, and you understand me, who is rep replicate. So all what we need from everybody here is the ability to convert, to tell others and say, you know what, that's it. Oh, I have a long list of friends. I'm not going to tell them about it because I know they say, <laughs> even they, they, yeah, they, 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 in fact, they're professors in their own right. You understand me? But I also know some few patients I would talk to and they'd be too glad to follow me. So they must not be uh, from the University of Manchester or Liverpool. No, 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 no. You know, so we may not need this kind of people. So it's going to work. You need to just have faith, but faith is not good enough if we don't have the faith. Yeah. Have we follow up question? Well, you even, uh, you guys even answered my follow up question because I was going to ask how we were initially going to start all of these projects because um, if we were to go by force, 
No, I just used the word. We're not going to break. Yeah, that, yeah, so you just answered my question yeah. that we're going to start off with the masses first. Yeah. And so thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Well, yes. doctor, doctor wanted to add to that. Yes. What I want to ask to that, that is that uh, we're already doing it. We're already doing it because yes. um, <laughs> what we're doing online daily is already a big part of it. You see that the, the message is growing all the time. And what's going to happen in the next few weeks is I'm just going to, um, at least for my side, I'm just going to amplify my voice a bit more. And coming out with some of these uh, materials uh, Dr. Sunday have written and just, you know, start using them to educate our people. And I will be going online, you know, daily, and it means it will be spreading all around the place. So in the next few months, you're going to be seeing <laughs> adaptation of the work that Dr. Sunday have done because he's so free giving, he said, okay, you can use it to, in any way you like. So that means that, you know, it can be adapted into anything. You know, we're thinking of making cartoons with some of the values that uh, he spoke about. Uh, you know, these cartoons uh, can be on uh, magazines, it can form, it can be on a uh, simple Facebook, uh, Facebook yeah. it can be on a little five minutes uh, animation, uh, okay. games and everything. So these are, areas we all can participate now already so there are many 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 projects which are electronics and they don't cost they don't, it doesn't require that anybody pack his loads and go to lagos tomorrow but there are also people who are in nigeria right now who are animators who can animate a storyline mm -hmm. or who can make a short film or who can make things that we already start to as, you know, create a value system in our people. And these people are already, you know, can't come on board right now. You know, we can start working together, creating these materials and start publicizing it. Uh, so you're just going to see the amplifying of all this material in the next few months. You want to tell them about the TV thing, idea you and Bishop and uh, trying to put together? Yes. Uh, secondly, we have this... Um, we are working on a satellite channel, which is going to be 24-7, uh, and which is going to, we are going to be using for a broadcasting of valued, uh, you know, to, to create a value that we want to have created in our people. Because we are not only dealing with people who are in Nigeria right now, but we are dealing with Nigerians yeah, in the diaspora. <laughs> you know, according to us, yeah, Africa, you know, according to, you know, some estimate, they say we have about 24 million Nigerians yeah, in the diaspora. Okay, so it is increasing daily. Wow. So oh, these oh, people, oh. Uh, you know, I they need, it was a bit more. <laughs> so these people need education, they need the awareness. So this satellite station is going to be communicating to all European countries and also being beamed to Africa countries. And all, African. all African countries. So what we're doing is uh, setting up programming that we create the value system that we want to have created. So we like want to all my broadcasts, all his broadcasts, even what we're doing right, right now. Right now, yeah. To go live to every country. Yes. That day, the day we are going to Yes. Do. So a part of what Dr. Sonny have spoken about on the transformation mm -hmm. of the plan is to have, uh, you know, movies created uh, with the values we want to have have, uh, you know, uh, documentaries created. Because our people don't know history. If you're talking, thinking about, like our national anthem, you know, people say, oh, what is that? A rise of compatriot. What is compatriot? They don't even know what the founding fathers, people who wrote that um, song, had in mind, what the value system they were trying to, you know, propose for Nigerians. So we will have opportunities to be able to showcase these things so that we, we can start letting people know that there were actually people who were thinking in the beginning. It's not like the ones we just have now, the bourgeois we just have now, but in the beginning, some people were actually thinking. So uh, you all know the, the nuisance that is coming out of uh, Nollywood. So we need to be changing the system by letting people know that, look, it is not all about voodoo and prayers in Africa. You know, <laughs> you know, we actually have normal family, normal people, <laughs> and, and and by creating programming that showcases the normalness of Africans, then we can we can start changing minds. And I can tell you right now, I know people, Europeans and Americans who are watching, who don't believe that 
Nigerians can sit down like this normally and have a proper discussion. Mm -hmm. Because the experience, the experience they have with Nigeria is always shouting. So the man is shout, his man is always shouting on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's true. Yes. So, so by even filming this and bringing it out to the world on a satellite channel, a lot of people say, ah, these people can talk normal. Mm -hmm. eh? And they are making sense. <laughs> And I also want to say, I also have to share this with you guys. When, when, I, when I started uh, my broadcasting career, uh, it was like kind of just shouting things in media. Yeah. So from no... Uh, sorry, I was like uh, all the time shouting and making noise. Uh, it's like uh, it's a kind of innate, you know. In, you know. But then gradually, I now, I now become a Larry King of, because I'm cool. You, need, you just need to go on... Uh, 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 Heritage TV or some of the program on Ben Television. I see. Well, I I take my time to react to people, and as it is now, and this is not bragging. Many of Nigerian but they run away from me because I put them on hot seat. You know, because I got nothing to lose. I got to tell the truth. I got to let other people know what they are doing to us, what they are do even doing to themselves. You see, because the meanest kind of a human being is that person that organize every month to uh, supply or or distribute bag of rice he's the one that is so small the one that organized that go to certain area and distribute bag of rice give them oil give them this give them that in order to keep substantial part of the money where is he going to take the money to they are the one who cannot think the person who can take will not show only 10 people in his constituency fish, but you show them how to catch fish. You know, so you can sleep well. Most of these people, they don't have rest. They, they always die of this and that. They are always per permanently in trouble themselves. It's only that you don't know what they are going through. So really and honestly, it's a lot in this for, for all of us. So those people who are particular who you know, say they are not interested, leave them alone. They be in minority as time goes on. You understand me? The people that you might be thinking, they, they, nobody will be, they are going to be a stumbling block to us. Those who doesn't want to come follow us, you know what we, what we say? If you talk to two, three people and they're not ready to, to join the train, what do you say? Next. Yes. Next yes. one. That's it. Because there are so many people who are willing to join. And also there are many people who do not want Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Prof. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Pastor, for uh, giving me the, this opportunity. But the, the question uh, on, on what I wanted to give my contribution has already was the question no given by the, uh, the sister. Um, I've been studying project management for almost two years. Yes. Um, I got the inspiration. Uh, about the project management by attending HMT yeah. because of most of the things we do almost deal with uh, project management. Yeah. So I also have a background in international economics. So okay. all those stuff deal with, uh, okay. with that. But uh, to answer, I wanted to, co to contribute to that question. Mm -hmm. um, Joseph Schumpeter, right? Yes. Uh, the father of innovation yes. say that um, whenever a new innovative project idea comes out, people always stand and go against it. But that don't, uh, doesn't matter for you. What matter for you matters for you. It's uh, not what you, pro you present to them. It's uh, the answer to the question: Why do you present it to them, mm -hmm. and how are we, how are we are you going to achieve the strategic goals related to your innovative project yes. idea? Yes. Idea. So uh, we we also learned that so we don't only we not often sell a product; we sell the idea behind the product. That's right. You know. The reason why are you introducing that new product? Mm, so, true. as I know, Pastor, Pastor is, uh, that was said by, by, by Pastor Mars Morey, yes. the most strategic strategi 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 person that 
He has knows. ever that's, met. That is, is, that is Miles Monroe's opinion. Miles Monroe, yeah. Is about that you. of the people he knows. Yeah, but that, yeah. I believe it. I, be, I believe in that. And I also wanted to add that so what Pastor is doing here is um, research and development. And research and development, it's what has been leading the economy yes, over the world. The world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in China, in you know, Singapore, yeah. those India. Yeah. So in Africa, we don't have uh, a planned economy. Yes. You know, a, a development plan of 5, 10, and 15 years. We don't have it yet. That's why people, we fortunately, go against it. But if we don't have it, there is no way to... To develop. You also talk talked about the um, Marshall Plan. Yes, sir. We know after the Second World War, a uh, country like uh, Germany and Japan was completely destroyed. Yes. But because of that plan, it has helped uh, 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 them to have more educated people because yes. uh, they. And Germany is number one country, right? Now yeah. In mm. Europe. yeah. After the Second World War, they only had that small number of special engineers. Mm. But how those engineers prepared new generation. Mm -hmm. They allowed people to go to work in the morning mm -hmm. and evening they went go to, to school, school. Yeah. evening schools. Yeah. And that relates to those school skills, the skill school skills that you are, schools, yeah. you, you, are, you are trying to create. Okay, school, skills, and not just education, theoretical education, yeah. but skill-based schools. Mm -hmm. they, they, are, they are very, very, very important. Uh, for example, uh, in my country, Congo, uh, we uh, like the government has created a ministry of um, special economic zone okay. in order to industrialize the country. Yeah. But they have been worried. We are going to create job, jobs, but uh, the, the youth are not prepared to meet the those jobs the, because they don't have the like this, the, 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 the skills related mm. to those jobs. Mm. So what? You have been doing it's it's really important. So the the only the, the work that needs to be done is the pedagogy. Yes. Pedagogy. The peda yeah. The education. But the education of people. The training. So mm. The training. Okay. That's Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah. Okay. Hello. Hi, we have a few questions on Facebook. Uh, the first one is, are you going to start concurrently in 36 states, or you will take one or two states as prototypes first before moving to others in sequence? I think we are going to start in one state in every uh, geo, whatever they call it. Geo? Geopolitical zones. Yeah, there are six zones. So I think we are going to have uh, a prototype we state in one particular uh, geopolitical zone. So, for example, uh, I don't know yet, but for example, I have a governor in one of the eastern, uh, you know, western states that wants me. It's not from my southwestern, yeah. I am from Ogun State, but this is a governor from another state. My state doesn't even know I exist, I guess. But this, this other governor... <laughs> This other governor approached me and he wants me to come with this to do. They want to give us the foundation and all the support for them to be the pilot, to do the pilot from their state. Now, in, for my, if to, to follow my heart, I would have liked to do a pilot in Anambra State. I, you know, I, I just, I'm just, I, I, there's something about the Anambra people, uh, you know, because, you know, they are so passionate, they, they are doing all the wrong stuff, but I see the zeal in them. Uh, you know, they are so bright for me. I think Anambra people are special. So I, want, I would have liked to use Anambra as one of the pilot states as well. In the north, I will wait for people's advice. I, I don't know all the other, go for, go for Africa. <laughs> so when we get there, yes. Lagos is the commercial center of Nigeria. Okay. I will do the job. Lagos is the uh, commercial center of Nigeria. If, I, if we are going to start any movement, any change, I think we need to consider Lagos as well. Anambra is far, far to the end, and um, 
I mean, I'm, I'm in my 60s. I've never traveled across that area. But, what, <laughs> but what, I mean, my, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a commercial center of yeah. Nigeria. My, my take on that, my, I, I'm, I, I mm. finish, you still want to say? Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, my take on that is this. Like uh, Doc said, you see, when you want to introduce a new product, you have to try it, cause it and evaluate and do a lot of things about it. And you might have to do a test run. You might have to bring some people to the lab to try it on them. Yes. And, and you see, we, we, we are looking for receptive, receptiveness of some people, some area. And if we start with, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, he's stealing some of my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> because genuinely, I believe this, we should start from the, the Southeast. Trust me. This is not because I'm married to an evil woman. But I tell you something, let's start. Genuinely, I don't know. I don't know where you get that. We, 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 is it Lagos? Is it we? Abuaba, I don't know some of you who understand Yoruba. We'll if come back. do that, I'm Biafra goes. And no, no. Ah! Ah! You are very practical. <laughs> and, uh, and that's what I'm saying. I but have really no, you are biased, though. You're no, not, no. No, that, no, it doesn't mean it. But you see, genuinely, genuinely, genuinely. When you start in a project, even here in Europe, they always look for a particular area yeah. to start, to kickstart it. Yeah. You understand me? But once it goes down well with the area in Newcastle, it becomes a, like a shy play. It becomes easy But that to is print. an authentic question she is facing about Biafra. But you have to address that. I don't mind the Sarawiwa area, where oil comes from and they are extremely poor. Well, that I wouldn't is mind reverse that thing, area. Reverse thing. I wouldn't mind that area. Yeah. Yeah, we, we will. Yeah, like, like I said, when, when we get there, don't forget that this is just uh, in, in, in initiatives that we are, we are at a small uh, uh, crawling moment. We are yes. still planning. There, there's the more and more planning is going to come into this. Yes, yes. It's a massive project, yes. but very easy to run if we are all hands together. Yes. You understand me? But the truth of the matter is, we will look for. It might not be Enugu. It might not be. It might be like we will conclude because it's not going to take the decision alone. We will look and. People will uh, bring their reports. Yes. Okay, so, look, don't, don't even try. Try with Quara State. And then we'll go to Quara. And when Quara people started, when we put them on fire, you understand me? They, you will see the results. So it might be Lagos. So don't worry. Ah. <laughs> you are giving political answer. <laughs> I, I, let me say, let me add to that. I think that if we, uh, with the Biafra situation, we, it has a legitimate worry. I want to beg my Biafra friends, and I want to let first of all let you know that not all Igbos, because the Biafras are the noise makers, the IPOB people. Is it IPOB? Mm -hmm. they, they make so much noise, they cr almost create a, an impression and to all Nigerians that all Igbos are Biafras or uh, uh, IPOB people. And I want to tell you that all Igbos are no more Nigerian people. Mm -hmm. And the IBOP people, maybe they are 10% maximum of Igbos. But they make so much noise. Even the Igbos themselves almost believe that uh, maybe they are all be, be having the same thing. But they don't really have the same fundamental beliefs like the IPOB Biafra people. So I think the normal Nibo people are just regular Nigerians. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, the right now, if, if the... Uh, the the Nnamdi Kanoga has not been cowed and has not been eliminated, I would have had the same problem. But I think that question is actually resolved already. And I think that movement of IBOB is going to fizzle out. Because when we begin to come with, when Nigeria begins to normalize and things will begin to go, and, they, and evil people are pra pra pragmatic, practical people, and they see that, no, even they are being used as the, uh, you know, pilot project, and you know, and this uh, improving their economic life, and Igbo people are very particular about the economy and about well-being, uh, entrepreneurship. And when that is given to them, and with free Nigeria, equal Nigeria, equality in Nigeria, I think we will not need to worry so much about the Biafra issue. I don't know if you wanted yeah, to. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, 
you wanted to talk about this particular one. No, 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 no. You, somebody wanted, you, mother wanted to talk about this one. Yeah. I think uh, you've already answered my question. Oh, yeah, because uh, uh, when Pastor was talking about um, at, you know, choosing from the Igbo side, my mind was going to like, why can't we try to um, different, you know, geographical. Um, like two different, uh, the Western and the Igbo, um, Eastern part, so that if there's going to be any problems, you'll be able to know on time that this is the obstacle we have here, this is the obstacle we have here. Yeah. Then by the time we go around, we'll be able to know the logistic one. Where start from Gombe? Where you start from anywhere? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. But we talk about six geo uh, political yeah. zones. So, yeah, please. Mine is a contribution. Okay. Like, uh, I suggest that, like, the area of um, showing the people the vision that, that the people are bringing to them is very, very important. Showing the people? Like, the vision, like, what you showed to us, like, what, what will happen. The plan. The plan that, that you people are having for the country. Okay. Like, showing it to them will really, like, attract them. And we want, and we also make people to want to work because I know that people are not comfortable with the situation. And since people are coming up with this kind of rules, like uh, this thing project, I think it will go a long way. So people have to see what we. Yes, like, like, like we. So that's we, more similar to what Niran said. Yeah. That we have to do a detailed. You know, I didn't show all the videos. Yeah. I didn't do all the. I, we just ran through because I wanted us to do the uh, interactive session. And even some of the presentations, if you go to the YouTube, Sunday at the Lodge Official, you remember the presentation, the video I showed. That video I showed with the American guy is on my YouTube, uh, Sunday at the Lodge Official. And then apart from that, there are two other presentations like this, three hours each, that, you know, where we are talking more details. So, you know, just to let people know that some of the information are already there on uh you know youtube so people could might want to explore some of those as well yeah what is it no, i just wanted to add from you know to what he said i my 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 idea of thinking to begin to create groups was actually to say for us to begin to introduce what we're going to do so they begin to hear it do you understand that, that's that's what i yeah that's what i didn't finish yeah, yeah, yeah. so i left it yeah Information, yes. information, yeah. Go ahead. Yes, it says, how would you deal with the religious leaders in Nigeria? In Nigeria, because they already think you are antichrist coming to spoil their business. So, what's your <laughs> Oh. Oh, you I, I'm the best person to answer this. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say to them, we we probably we are likely to. Uh, uh, they should be waiting for our invitation. We are going to partner <laughs> with them. We will partner with them. We will partner with other uh, big uh, religious organizations, and we will not trouble them. They can continue doing what they're doing, but we partner them. But it's only one we ask them to do is just to uh, uh, do things that are good for their members. Because at the end of the day, uh, what their, most of their members are also saying uh, is they also gradually getting. In order for them to keep their members, they will also have to change. Because uh, also part of the people that don't want to uh, see me on the set, don't want to be my guest, are, are, the, are the, the pastor religious people, pastor. religious. They don't want to come. Because I have so, a few questions to ask them. And they say, Otumba, no. And somebody came from Holland. He, he came with about four Bibles. He has already marked them. And, well, <laughs> and, and, Before and, he came? Yeah. And he, has, he brought him, you know, and he came and uh, he sat down and we were talking and asking this question that are related to the people. And he was angry because I wasn't really to romance, ready to romance or patronize and be religious in any form or shape. People are really angry and they're genuinely, you know what? These same people they, are, they, are, they, they see as their followers, they could create a kind of tsunami for them. Because you know what? Where if they see alternative, the people that can change their thinking, you understand me? They, they will run away. You know, because you cannot collect so much millions of people's money, use it for churches, use it for different kind of business, and the members cannot participate. 
They cannot send their children to, their, to these universities. These are issues. And I cannot look at that, look in the eye and say, I will not discuss it. So we will partnership with other religious uh, organizations. We will interact with them. We will talk with them. We will show them uh, our, because we, we are not hiding anything. We will not hide in anything. And if they don't want to partner with us, you'll be shocked the few they out of them, them, yeah, the few of them that will, will, uh, will receive the message, like in the Bible, I mean, mm -hmm. somebody received the message. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when they receive the message, they will multiply it. Yeah. So don't worry, we are, we are your friends, we will remain your friends. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think to add to that, I think it's also, also going to be a challenge because, well, <laughs> look, you have people who have been preaching for years how God is going to bless people. So now there are some people who are coming from Ukraine. And and you have to work for it. Yeah, they say you have to work for it. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, now is we have to see now which one is more effective. Is uh. it is, is it the prayer that is effective or is the work and pray that is more effective? There be one now, near among you. So yes. Amen. <laughs> so amen. So if the work and pray is more effective, then it's now time for the pastors to start changing their messages. <laughs> and secondly. There will have always been discussion in the last few weeks about uh, the, the tithing. So it's time, by the time you see other people coming to build hospitals that, uh, that the common man can use, then the fingers are going to be pointing to you and say, where you're on. That's okay? It. Yes. So that's the challenge. So it is also a way of they can voluntarily participate in the develop national development, or they will be compared to by their own people mm -hmm. to contribute. Yeah. And the will not be good for them. So I will answer like this because the, that question is directed at me. Because I started this campaign about tithing and, and now everybody is revolting against it. Uh, so, and thank God for that the freeze is championing it. And then I'm doing some other things that pastors don't like. So they are seeing me as enemy. But I'm going to say something now that's going to be at the borderline of pride. But it's not, I'm not, God is my witness. It's not about pride. It's about truth. But what I'm going to say is that none of them, all those Jews in Nigeria, none of them has what it takes to hold their members when I show up. Even their own members, they will not be able to hold them. They are holding them now because I'm not around. <laughs> and because, the, and the reason, it's not because of pride, though, and it doesn't have anything to do with my personality. Me, not me, Sunday at Elijah. But it's just because of what I'm coming with. I'm coming with the truth. And they, they, they have built a system that is holistically faulty that is based on, at best, half-truth or non-truth. So they don't have what it takes. For example, I mean, I'm going to make it, and I'm going to even tell them my own story. Somebody was telling, Pastor, you are too open. Ah, why are you telling people the things you are going to do? Strategy. Nobody goes to war and de declares the strategy. I said, yeah, don't worry. That is how much confidence I have in the truth that I carry. For example, I, if I come to the state, to Nigeria, and I say, everybody that has a project, register. They are strong members, eh? The assistant pastors will be going secret to register the town. <laughs> Let me tell you so. Come on. Eh? Eh? Don't be so. <laughs> you know, then, when I come up the next day, and I say, <laughs> but I, not next day, but next time. And I say, uh, if you want to revive and, you know, turn around Nigeria, and you are ready to pay the price for it, we are going to give you scholarship, feeding you three times a day, and giving you pocket money at the end of the day. But you must be ready to die. You see, you come and see whose members will be sitting down in my class. Uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. I don't have problem with religious people. 
How do I have the lotion proper with the blood? And they are the ones that are scared. They are the ones that are scared. No matter, there is no amount of uh, threat they are going to use to hold their people that bad. For example, when I announce that I want to create 10,000 millionaires in the next two years, if you want to join, be in the number, register. You think their member will just say, no, I don't want to be. I don't want to be. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be in the dump. I don't want to be among those ones. <laughs> so, 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 you know, I, I am an experienced dogged guy. I've been here for 30-something years. I've been fighting every day of those 30-something years. And God has taught me. I am man of, you know, for example, I wanted to, I'm writing these books now. And people are saying, Pastor, don't talk about those pastors. Because in Nigeria, people who are powerful, even politicians, they dare not dare pastors. I said, because they don't know what it takes. They, don't say, they said, Pastor, please, don't talk about them because you, need, you will need them. I said, okay, we'll see who we need who. <laughs> they said, ah, but because crowd, the people are with them. I said, they are with them. They are just keeping custodians of them. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. temporary custodians. Until the truth comes. Yeah. When the truth <laughs> shows up, the pastors themselves will become his and say, ah, you know him now, let him receive us. One more thing. And, and, and genuinely, genuinely, even beggars, they know quality of food. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> beggars. Because these days, beggars in, in, in the street of Lagos and some other places, there's a limit. I mean, there used to be 20. If you give them, yeah, they do have choice now. So if we offer quality, if we offer quality to some of these yeah, members, yeah, they, will, they will lash onto it. And when we say we're going to do it, I will generally I will do, do it, it and we deliver. Yeah, Tell somebody it. should stand up and say they're not going to follow you. Ah! That. It's not possible. It's not possible. Because, like I said, the selling point here for us is we are going to do what, what we say. say. There's nothing to do like yes. you pray, pray, pray. Even the, the ah! vice president said, <laughs> pray, pray. "Hello, we've been praying to. We we need to, we need to act, act now. now to back it up. So, and that's what we are going to do. So, guys, we're on the right track." With the right manual, with the GPS is working, <laughs> and uh, it's going to land us at uh, a place of glory. How do you say it? Yeah, yeah. You know, we are we are all going to land. And what is also very important is, is this is going to be a long time commitment too. Again, I, I said this many times. I hope it's not something because I keep saying it. At seventy plus, I might not have the 20 or 30 years. It might even get a little bit earlier than that. Yes. The most important thing is the, the journey of 10,000 miles. That's good. Yeah, when we start, we will get there. There are people out there who are very, very hungry. They are desperate. They're looking for genuine change. This time around, we're not going to call it change because I say, ah, when they hear change, they will run away. That's say, that's no, 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 no. And that's why we have come with... Uh, this visionary name of transformation. Yeah. What is it? What? So when we get there, everything is going to be okay. Yeah? One question, right? Yeah. The last question? Yes, this is the last one that I've got here. Um, but I think you've answered it in some ways. Says, how do you plan to filter people that would not, will want to boycott the good plans? How do you plan to filter? I don't understand. Um, I, Maybe I'll too well understand. I, I understand that. What that question is, in effect, yeah, you, you, or you want to take it off? No, you, you, okay. you, you, you. I think what that question is alluding to is like, uh, uh, yes, among us, among the 12 uh, people following Jesus, yeah, we, we will have 100 Judas. Yes. But we will deal with the way we are going to deal with them is we will continue doing what we are doing. We are going to stay focused. Amen. And when we are focused, back in fact, they will come back, back again back and, back. and say, they will come back and say, uh, it was me. Uh, but again, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and then we can welcome them back. Yeah, what, is, what is key here is filtering them, you know. Thank you. Uh, it's not going to be a problem. Bring them on. Ah. We will deal with them. Yeah. We will deal with them. Yeah? 
In fact, the, 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 the easiest way to do it would be by the time the project, the plans, the, 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 the structure is in place, it, it will be working for itself. And that is what I pray for. Is there any more? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, okay, let me sit down. Uh, I watched the presentation last year uh, from the comfort of my bedroom, on my bed, under my duvet. And I was skeptical. I was like, mm, would that is, yeah, yeah, is, is it possible? It's like this pastor, uh, Dr. D, uh, Sunday Adelaja has, knows how to convince people and all that. Um, fast forward, almost 365 days later, I'm here. Less than a year. Less than a year. Um, if before the HMT, I still had my, towards uh, the, I wasn't thinking about that, but I had a lot of skepticism about going back to Nigeria. I said I would join the prayer warriors and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Under my duvet with my heater on, you know. But going through the HMT, I mean, I don't know if it was the third day. You know, there's something about the third day. Jesus died, and on the third day, he oh my goodness. Um, it was battle because I didn't realize how deep the conditioning is coming from Africa being a lady, the conditioning, I had, you know that there was <laughs> arguing, not, not about, and thank God, what the point I was trying to make, this presentation covered it. There, there is solution for the people. Therefore, any other thing you're bringing along with it, they will take it on board. So, but the conditioning, and that's why God is delaying you, because God is working on us. Working on us here, there are still some things DSA will say that will shake you down your root. But as for me, when he started the, talking about some of my previous mentors and all that, to me it was like a bitter pill because I've worked closely with some of them and I knew, I, what I always tell myself, can you do exactly what they're doing in every area? I said, in this area, I will take this, I'll take this, I'll take this, but that area, no. Okay? So... It was, it was hard for me to hear him talk to, it's like somebody rebuking my dad for doing something wrong. It's difficult to take in, but I accepted it, accepted it as the truth. So inside my mind, right there and there, I made up my mind that no matter how tough the topic Dr. Sonda Delaja will bring up, I will sit and let it sink into me. I don't know if you understand. Yeah. It's like being amongst the 5,000. Jesus has fed the Owambe people. They have come, they've gone. And Jesus is now asking the remnants, what about you? The, 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 my response is, you have the word of truth. I've sought for this truth for quite a long time and only was fed religion. A time came, I said I was no longer interested in religion. I would rather starve. So now, finding the truth, I want to go all the way down with it. Please, I want to encourage those of you that are still, like I was last year, to watch the YouTube videos. Take time. Take your time. What, don't just listen to one topic of Dr. Sonja Adelaide and make up your mind. Listen to more than 2,000. And when you take a series, make sure you, you listen from 1 to 13, some of them 14. Finish, finish the whole series. Don't skip. Finish it. And reason, if you have question, write. He's very accessible. You write him an email, and he will attend to you. Please. And I, I appeal to other Nigerians. Before you defend, there is something my mom used to tell me. You do, don't go arguing that the baby on your back did not pluck the tree, uh, the fruit from the tree, because you, you, you don't have eyes at the back. Before you start defending any man, any woman, remember, on the last day, we will only give account of ourselves. You don't know what others are doing at the midnight hour. 
So before you start defending people, make sure you're in, you're, you're in correct, you're in alignment with God, and you're doing what He called you here to do. That's all I have to say. Then finally, my yeah, final that's, question. That's because a lot of people are trying to defend their geos and fathers. Yes. And then they block me up. They turn so me sad. Up. So sad. Oh, sorry. Then finally, my last question. Uh, because before I came here, I worked with immigration. My final question is just security. What are, I know you're still, the word is still going out and doing uh, what it needs to do, but what is the plan for your security? Yeah, that's a major question. <clears throat> because from the stories f uh, that I've heard from Arams, uh, you know, <clears throat> without security, it's impossible to go to Nigeria. So these people, that you saw there now, the team in America, they are signing a security agreement with one of the top three security firms in the U.S., personal security, yeah, not pri 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 uh, private security, uh, private security firms, jo not just for me, but for the whole team, for the Americans and other people coming. But apart from that, I am also thinking of uh, and we are also thinking, we are also still debating that um, with them about uh, talking with some Israeli companies. And then I, also, I was also informed that there are, there are some security companies in England that hire professionals from all over the world. They are former Israeli military something. So we are going to go with our own security details to Nigeria. Uh, from Russia here, uh, I will probably be going with some. Then we're going to have is is some Israeli companies involved, some American companies involved. So it's going to be, it's not going to be a personal affair. It's going to be a corporate affair. It's going to be a professional approach kind of thing. Everything we'll be doing will be done. Uh, okay, for example, the, 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 the think tank that I have in Nigeria, they are the ones that are, that, you know, that Coca-Cola hired, for example, to enter the country. MTN hired to enter the country. To the country. Uh, you know, now, uh, what do you call it? Mag you know, f f f that meet, uh, that KFC hired them to come into the country. So on that level, so they are going to pro give us proposals and details on how we are going to be packaged and we are going to, everything is going to be done very professionally, including security. Uh, in addition to the, oh, sorry. Yeah, let, let you, you have, let, have the good man. I thought the doctor was going to say something before. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, um, before I left home, Nigeria, in 1988, I was a senior nursing officer. I was actually a principal nursing officer on level nine. And I was earning 300 naira then. And I couldn't buy sugar for my family comfort comfortably was one of the reasons why I packed my load and came, said I wanted to go and explore and, and find something else. But the situation is still the same thing back at home. People are still poor. There's still poverty all over the place. So for me, this is what I live for. This is what I was made for. I'm ready to go now, anywhere, anytime. I'm ready. This is, this is, this is what I'm born for. This is what I... We have to, they, I, and, and I, it makes me crazy when they give them lottery. It's brain draining. They've drained all the brain that is good out of Nigeria. So that's why we have unintelligent people there. Because uh, uh, visas have been given to all of them that, that, that mean anything. They will come back. So uh, wow. I, I'm, I'm ready for this because um, uh, it, it was poverty that drove me out. But the poverty is still there. Nothing has changed over almost 30 years. So I'm ready for this. Uh, regarding regarding um, security, again, like I said, I want to repeat it for the last time. I'm not religious. I, I, I'm, ju I, I'm just godly. But I can tell you something. The chief security for all of us, especially for this man who is going to be the Jera in front, is going, is going to be the almighty Allah, God. And I can tell you this. I don't know. Who else can do it? This is, uh, JFK was, uh, you know, there are many people that, but when God is saying, I'm going to guide him, nobody can do anything. Yeah. Having said that, I'm not saying 
is going to is, uh, we are going to expose him to danger. No, but the Almighty, the Creator, your creation, will always guide you. Will always be with you. You understand me? And and like I said, this journey it, it's not going to be difficult because the truth is the 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 most important thing is that we are honest. I don't know whether you understand that. Once all of us are honest, it, every other thing will follow. Once we don't have any under whatever mind, you understand me, we will not have difficulties. You understand me? Yeah. And we're all going to be very happy. Like children uh, play, we say, happily thereafter. Because whatever we are doing is not for us today. It's going to be the uh, benefit of our children, children. Yeah, we're all going to live forever. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, I want to reiterate the fact that uh, this is not politics. There is no motive behind it. You know, Nigeria man, we say, what is their motive? Mm. Eh? What is their motive? There is no motive behind it. It's just the genuine love for a fellow Africans to develop because we are tired of the poverty. That's just what it's all about. When it is done, when it's done, then the new generation of young people will come up and start with the right mindset and start leading the country. Then many of us are going to back down because that's, then you, there is the objective to get people who are mentally sound to start going uh, leading the, the country. But we as people, we are not politicians. I'm not a politician. Mm. Um, and I always say to people, I'm never going to contest for the election in Nigeria, not even local government election. So I don't, there is no motive there. How, you know, how, and secondly, this is not Nigeria's money. It's so because when you're in politics, you say, nah, the man won't chop. I make a. No, this is not Nigerian money. This is money that people are bringing from other parts of the world to help develop Nigeria. So therefore, the common man cannot be afraid say, they won't come so that they can chop money too. There's no money to chop. Mm -hmm. So that's why those two things people need to understand. One, there's no, no political motive. For, and number two, there's no money to chop. This is just hard work. Um, you know, everybody involved is just putting in their bits to make, to change, uh, have a, a transformation of the minds and the society. And also, uh, many people also want to know why where are you going to get the money? You said it, we're going to get the money from foreign investors. And it needs to be said. Most of the, if you ask the Italian government to give us 30 billion, do you know how painful it is to them seeing dead bodies washed ashore all the time? They are really concerned. So they genuinely want to invest in a, in a government that want to create, bring about change. Yeah. So we are dealing with people, yeah, they are very nasty, but at the same time, they are very, very kind people. Can you imagine uh, when they see these uh, 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 people, the, uh, the high seas, they go and meet them. They bring them aboard. They give, they clothe them. They give them food. They do everything. Sometimes it's cheaper for them to give us a lump sum amount of money and say, keep, keep your people. Are. So, so really and honestly, there, there is in, there are a lot in need for us. Where we will not bother. And like I said, the politicians, I can say, people should get the message across to them. We will not touch them. Yeah. Is them they will them later on when the system is in operation. I don't I don't even want to start speculating what the system is going to do for them. Yeah, but the truth of the matter is, governments all over the world are saying now. They want to do business with sensible government. people, yeah. government, who want to form a sensible government, because it's cheaper for them. In Germany, you understand me, in many other places. And part of also what I keep quickly remember now, we've we, we spoken, we've shown so many clips of what we are going to do. And because we, they are all designed in such a modern manner, you, because when you look at the IDP people, you're still expecting them uh, money that come from WHO, from different organizations, they're still not reaching them. They're still sleeping on their tents. They're still having their children have to sit down in tents, 
it in a big bowl with a lot of water and maybe one pepper soup or whatever pour into it. This is inhuman. We will not do that. We want to treat people rightly. We want, and when they say it, they love it. Most of them will follow Boko Haram is because they are seriously neglected. An average Almanjiri will collect 1,000 naira and show where his mommy and his daddy is. It's as bad. So, and when we say uh, this is going to be a voucher, this is going to be a system we are going to employ to get them to the square meal in a decent place, they will be cladded. Do you know how many, many millions of Europeans that when they see a good thing going on as a program, they would donate. Even they would not donate their use something, they would bring uh, uh, designers. They will get these people education, we get these people to feel like a human being. It is not difficult to transform human beings. We just need to put the structure in place. Show them it is possible. And they will embrace it. And like I said, all this project is not for you and it might not be for us. It might be just for, you know, because we care about our children and they are going to be the beneficiary of this project. And with this, I, I again want to say, let's join hand together. Let's sleep over it. For those who, are, who doesn't want to follow us on this journey, don't come again. No, no. no. <laughs> so, you understand me? So, just say that to yourself. This is not for me. Yeah, this project is not for me. And I can understand that. Yeah, we can yes, understand course, that. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to be every, oh, yeah. yeah. But those who believe that this is a project, you must give your all. I remember when I first met my wife. And she, uh, she left the University of Ibadan in 1983. And, well, <laughs> I'll tell you the story quickly. I, her friend have introduced her to me that she's a business-minded, she's uh, an IT person, and she's going to Abuja to go and collect a, a, a contract of 26 million, a long time, that is 1999. So, and I said, huh, I need to see her quickly. I was so desperate to, you know, so that won't go to say, I said, somebody want to see you. That my uh, late friend who was a uh, commissioner for, he died now, for uh, information legal state. So the, her friend brought her to us, and we were saying, well, we're not going to be together again. So we were eating Amala. And when she came, she, she looked at the people and said, uh, well, yeah, these people who want me. But she knows she entered an office of uh, a commissioner. So she said, cut a long story short. When we, we now say, we, we tricked her, to come to come and collect and get a contract. And I'll tell her friend to take her out and tell her there's no contract to, but there's a contract. And that uh, her, uh, friend said, uh, Uncle Bode, which contract do you have then? I said, tell her I love her, I like her, and I want to marry her. After we have charged everything. So she now took her and said, this is what the other one said. That night. <laughs> I the other uh, said, uh, <laughs> he, he likes you, but there's, there's no contract. So she came back <laughs> and she looked at us and said, ah, I was going to Abuja to, to, to sign for a contract. And I said, this is a contract of lifetime. Because she's a very honest person. I'm not patronizing her. She will have not collected the contract without executing it. So she now looked at me and said, and I said, what's your answer? Hello, you are wasting our time. I started joking. And she said one thing I want to say. She said, I'm going to give it my all. So we must give this project our all. Well, on that bright note, yes. oh, you want to well, I concur with everything. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> My heart is dead. Yes. On the, it, okay, if nobody else wants to, okay, yes, sir. Contribution, yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, every, it, let me speak the mind of a typical Nigerian that maybe if you see that video, you think that, wow, this is massive. And the first thing that will come to your mind is that, well, you need collaboration with the government to be able to touch some of those critical infrastructure like power, rail system. But I so much love the strategy. The strategy is sound. And the strategy is, the way I understand it today, is you are going directly to the people first before you engage in the massive project. When you go and intervene in the 
the, the, the project at the lower level, now you connect with the people, you, you connect with the heart, they will love you. Now you're building a critical mass. So those kind of opposition you may think you may have, you will not have that again because now you're talking about 774 local government that you have, have intervention projects yes. in those places. You have the masses behind you. Nobody will dare you. So when you're going to introduce the national project like electricity or rail, nobody will stop you. The strategy is very sound. I just want to commend you on that, and I appreciate you that. Are from the north. Yes. What do you think the north is saying? Uh, yeah. yeah. You are from the north. What do you think the north response or attitude would be to yes. this kind of? Uh, I believe it will be welcome. Um, like you said, like the Boko Haram issue and all these crises in the north is because poverty. They don't have anything to do. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, like you talk about the IDP camps. I mean, I, I've had. I've, I've done little work at the IDP. I supply relief material at the IDP camp. They get a lot of help, but the help never gets to the people. You have issues of uh, flooding. I mean, in my state, there was a time that there was flooding. People lost their homes. The government released money, and some people cornered the money. I said, you don't have conscience. These people lose everything, but you still pocket the money and not so to introduce something like this, no, it's going to be massive, yeah. So I think this should allay the fear of, or concern in the heart of people thinking that, wow, you have too many, too many opposition like politicians or government. I don't, I don't think, by the time you touch the people and you have the people behind you, no, nobody can stop you. They, they, are, look, they are really local people. They are really local people in the north that I know. They're really local people, they are trained be it in Islamic studies or whatever, there, there's so many of them who are looking to embrace a project like this. They will give you, they will give you, they will give you their all. They will work very, very, even harder than we will be doing. I know there's so many of them out there. You understand? Because they're just like paying lip service to, to their governors. It's not like the problem in the Southeast. They know who are their problems. Who, they know who are causing them problems. You understand me? A, 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 then comes somebody who wants to take advantage of the situation. Why don't they attack people who are causing the problem? But as far as we are concerned, like I said, we will bypass them. We are not going to be belligerent. And you know what? One more good thing. If I call uh, Amishi this evening and say, uh, Aburu, uh, guess what? We, we want, if, if it need be. So guess what? As you are building your old gorge side by side, I have some people who will help you. They will be in hands or whatever. I say, ah, I took my bring it on. You understand? Should be, we know what we are doing. And we now start our own God. Am I making sense? Then we, are, we now start our own whatever, side by side. Shame we take him back to River State. Because by the time we finish putting letters, uh, 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 rail, whatever, he, they will see. It is possible. It is doable. Don't let us doubt anything. Yeah, it is doable. We will, we will get in touch with all of them when we are ready. Um, just shortly. Yes. Okay. Uh, Pastor Tude Bakari is my friend. He has visited me here on this uh, project. Uh, I had another project that I wanted to help Nigeria to do, some amount of money. But the um, Americans I, I was bringing, they work differently, for example. Okay. They had, we had a, a good amount of money. You know, that Nigeria want to borrow 10% of that money from China, of the money I had ready to give to Nigeria. Not me, but I had people who were willing to release that money to Nigeria. But they, the Americans, they needed to, they cannot start working with the government of Nigeria without memorandum of um, understand MOU. But the Nigerian government says, we cannot sign anything, even MOU without uh, you know, the, money, the amount being released or put on their name. And Americans said, no, no, no. Without MOU, we don't even do anything. No. But to a Nigerian man, Nigerians say, oh, no, we don't want anybody to use our signature. Because you know, they have a lot of uh, 419 
using signature. We are we are afraid. We are not sure. So it was if we sign, we will give the letter, a federal government letter, and then you know we don't want. That is how the thing was killed. Even though Pastor Bakari came here, to you know he was the intermediary between us and the government, but that was what killed. America, you know, I understood what he was saying because he had he said not him but the government. The, if this was on the to the highest level, you know, the Nigerians are so the government this because they are anti-corruption government and they don't want you know so they, they were so afraid of signing mou what is mou and americans say they don't do they we don't do anything without starting mou is nothing it's just that we want to you know i've never lived in america and look i've never done business i don't know if that is true but this is what these americans were but he's on board yeah i mean it's uh MOU is just, and like I said, it's, a, it's an understanding. It's, a, it's an understanding to say, okay, you, you, and, you and I, we are, we are going to do business. Eh? And um, this is, if, we, if we do the business, this is how the terms are which, at which we are going to do it. It actually doesn't oblige somebody to anything. It's just having a, the pre-contract that is, okay, look, if we are going to do business, this is the terms that we are, at which we are going to do it, terms and conditions. So, and then, when the time for the business has really come, then an, a contract is actually signed, which is okay. That's what they were saying. Yes. Yeah. So, you cannot expect a foreign party, a European or American party, to release money without any signature on anything. It is not done. But, in Nigeria, I know they love that a lot, to, to, to just bring money. And this is not the only time such problems have occurred. Yeah. You know, yes, we have also... When uh, you I know, it. yeah, it, it happens often. You know, mm -hmm. I'll give you a typical example. Uh, we have a famous state in Nigeria where I come from, where <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was uh, in a do state, for example, when they built a hospital, and um, there was some people from Houston who wanted to bring uh, hospital equipment from Houston to for free. Uh, you know, government didn't have to pay for it. So when the gov when the people yes when the people brought to bring the equipment, they needed a paper from the governor, just a letter to say okay they will receive the yeah. equipment, and that they will take care of the equipment. The the government the response was from the governor what is in for us. So in terms of okay which bribe you bring. So because they didn't bring, nobody brought something for them, they just refused. And one of the statements, one somebody said, oh, you know what, every month, end of the month, something they come for Abuja, which one they, and this guy will have uh, equipment. <laughs> so those equipment later went to Mexico, you know. So that is how some of these people have been destroying their own people for years. And now some of this, this hospital is still there empty. There's no single, not even a bed inside. You know, so this is not a problem from one state or one instant. If you go into the history of Nigeria to tomorrow, this is happening on a daily basis. That's why nothing changed. There are people, there are organizations in the Western world that I have met personally who are prepared to do something. But those things, I'm in agricultural business. There are, there are, there are, there are organizations in the Netherlands, for example, who are prepared to just bring tractors use tractors that they don't use, uh, bring them to Africa to do that. But you know, the funny thing is that once these things are ready, suddenly you will get a lot of conditions from the Nigerian government. Suddenly they want to have a uh, John Deere type 5782. Uh, <laughs> uh, not the one you want to bring. So those are the things, you know, and that is why it is very difficult to work with the, these people. But in, in my own case, for example, it pained me so much that I was not even be able to, ah, because these Americans, they loved me, they believed in me, they even approached me that this is for your country. Oh. They said, find us a Nigerian that we can trust. They told them, you, you have to trust this man with your life. So since you say you could trust me with your life, and now Nigerian government is saying, and my people are dying of hunger. And even though our government said they will not sign this thing. But I think I was telling them, please try to understand the Nigerian government, even without signing the thing, release the money. 
and yes i was trying to beg them and say please because it's for the sake of our people at least let's do something let's do something to you know make sure you know, to just make something happen ah that's when i know america this way people this they don't compromise on principle on their principles no. okay. yeah, because they do they are accountable to their own people every one dollar they I, I was almost crying with it. It doesn't help. They say, if Nigerian government will not sign the OMU, you, you lose the whole thing. And they now told me, just like, they had it for six months. And last month, they just told me, that said, the, month, the offer has been off the table. They have removed it from Nigeria. And I will show you the amount of money we are talking about now. You, I mean, I'm weeping right now. Yeah, yeah. My little question is: um, Will they be? Um, will the federal government be informed so that they wouldn't think? Um, even though we are going to start from the grassroots, you know, the federal government, I think, should be aware so that they wouldn't think it's we are trying to uh, do a political lobby. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is that the question? Yes. Um, the, the, good, the good news is um, there are series of uh, new laws that are passed by the Senate, yeah? yeah? And one of them, hopefully I think the final, they will put the final sentence to them that the, the development can start taking shape from the local government level. So they are going to be autonomous, they are going to be independent, and they'll be getting their, their uh, genetics. Yeah. But yeah. allocations. Allocation, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So it's, it's getting to a point. We, we, we're taking over at the right time. <clears throat> because now we will not need to go through federal government. We, we, we can start, like he said in his presentation, we can start operating with the normal local government. And also part of uh, his pitch was that uh, when we start you know, parallel with, uh, with our own project, there won't be any problem. Yeah, because they'd be too happy. We're going to be partner, not partner in crime, but partner in development. And one more good things, because I know the, the sense of these people, I know how they operate, most of them. i just give you an example of our mission. If you say, Abro, I will have a project. We want to supplement or complement your one, one way road you have been doing. I will just jokingly say that to him. I say we'll be, we'll be We'll be, we'll be building additional something. He will, he, will, he will be too happy to agree. So federal government in this, in this uh, our project, we, we will not, we'll be doing it in such a way that we want to complement. But we know, we know, we know what we, our targets are. We know what we are after. So when we say we want to complement, and, and I'm saying it loud, they, they, they are going to listen. That we genuinely want to, and truly and honestly, this is not a trick. We want to complement what they are doing. Uh, is that not so? Yes. So, where is the problem? Where is the plan to topple anybody's government? And we genuinely want to create additional employment, addi additional information in the area of education. We want to uh, create different kind of things to support the government. That we, and we are, we, are, we are not going to be belligerent in any form or shape. There will be two. Yes. They will be very, very happy. I know that. Because as you can see, the, the provision for NGOs. Yeah? yeah? Because we want to call it as like a kind of, yeah? yeah? Is that not what we're talking about? Yes. So they, there won't be any problem. I can assure you of that. Okay. Yeah? Thank you, sir. Yes, please. So ideally, how many people do you guys want to have signed up before, you know, getting started on this project? Because realistically, there are going to be some people that have cold feet. And despite the fact that, you know, 3,000 people are a lot of people that have signed up already, there are going to be people that, uh, that are going to get cold feet or that will have, like, issues with passport or their visas or health issues or etc. So what is the goal number of people you guys want to have signed up before implementing this, these projects? Why do you think that's important? When we are ready, believe me, 
we have more than enough, more than we need. Okay. Right now, we're just targeting 2,000. 2,000? Mm-hmm. And you guys have already surpassed that number? I think so, yeah. Awesome. But we, just, we are just you just added right. one because I just um, applied. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the color of your lipstick <laughs> beautiful, uh, <laughs> beautiful stuff i'm looking at it it's unique it's not what i see every day <laughs> look like a rainbow color <laughs> thank you thank you yeah, thank you very much uh, yeah I, I i i had a situation not long ago on uh, uh, my program um, on Heritage TV. And I had a guy who is a uh, Cameroonian Southern Patos. You know, they have issues. Yeah, Guys, the, yeah this, the Southern Cameroon has been in trust for many years under the United Na- Nations. And I think the last na- uh, UN Assembly, they agreed to ask them to go for independence. I mean, they've been keeping them for too long. So, and they, ag- they agreed with them. Uh, the, the second person in the history of uh, Cameroon, since Cameroon was born, is yeah. still there. Yeah, he's been there for he's 83, but he's been there for about 90, year, 90 something years, 10 years even before. He, because he was the deputy to Ahijo, okay. and then he took over. Uh, at, uh, by, wow. yeah. And so he has, he has been there right from the inception of uh, Cameroon. So the point I want to make is I know this guy approached me that he wants to come on my program. And uh, uh, check it apart, f- apart from another thing. I, 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 I told him to bring his questions. And the day he wants to come on my program, he, uh, as he was approaching the door, the phone rang. And guess what? His immediate brother died in Cameroon. He was told and that his brother had died. And he said he took just two minutes to process it and say, do I go on October who uh, uh, program scheduled? Or I go back and started crying or weeping and he said, He's a lawyer and said, so, you know what, I can always deal with that. He's gone, he's gone. Let me go and even dedicate the program. So when he came, we dedicated the program to him. And for by the time he finished the 48 minutes uh, program, we have clocked 11,000, mm. which is massive on, online. Because what the rule is, you have that 11,000, you can comfortably multiply it by six. Because the way it was like radio, if you have so many thousands, People that clog on, on radio always multiply by six. That's how they calculate it. So, and, and today, there are so many changes because he it, it said repeatedly there are so many changes taken uh, in, in, in Cameroon because they have been oppressed all their life. You understand? Know, We're also partly uh, uh, responsible for these pro- problems and so on and so forth. So, what I'm saying is, in between, to get the number, it's, it's not difficult. Like I said, oh yeah, there are a lot of bad people around there, but there's so many good people. You know, the bad people are very few. They're just like sand. You put a sand, one, two, three sand, inside a big bucket of gari or rice. And, uh, you understand me? And make mistakes to crack. You will be prepared to throw away the whole, you know what I mean? So there are really a lot of people, soldiers who are ready to uh, follow because like, they, they are they are so despondent they are so angry they are generally looking for a genuine messiah and if they see the messiah in you they are ready to give you give it a try and that's where we are banking on we will get them they are really waiting you understand me? again I just we just need to be dedicated and devoted and ready to show them yeah we will not stay behind and tell them to fall I mean I say go in the front. Because that is what has been killing most of the protesters in Nigeria. Mm. You never see Wale Shoyinka. You, you, you never see all the who and who to lead the march. Mm. It has always been the poor people they put in the front. And they got killed. Yeah. It has always been the children of the poor people that would die for a cause. And that's why it's not been very effective. So this time around, we are lit- and like I said, we are not fighting. We are not fighting. America. Our program will speak for itself. Thank you. Thank you. Tell them what this will do. We don't mention it, but what this will do for Nigeria, what this thing that went off the table, what you just said. Well, this is uh, 
uh, you know, I'm perplexed because what I saw now, that is like um, the transformation that would create is like, it's off the table. you know, you know, like the new, the biggest hospital, the Cancer Institute in Texas, you go and Google it. It can create like 20 of those in all over Nigeria. It can create over 10,000 kilometers of roads. Okay, really, not the small, small road and this expressway like you have in, uh, you, know, school you know. Well, this, this, that money right now can fund all universities in Nigeria for at, least, for at least three years. And not just fund it, but transform the, 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 gov the work class, to transform them to a work class universities. All the universities this in Nigeria. Can it provide all elect electricity in Nigeria under this amount of money? Well, this, that money, that money, could provide the electricity in Nigeria like it is in any European country. That, that is what was on the table because yeah. the argument that we will not sign MOU. You know, I, was, I am going, you know, you know, you need to know what is happening to me because of what I know. But what can I do? I can just, you know, do my best. Yeah. Have you had an audience with white people? <laughs> no, no. I've not been able to travel. Yeah, it is a sad story. It's a sad story because the money that the comp the money last time the go this government government said they, they cannot fund their budget. Okay, they cannot fund their 2017 budget because they don't have money anymore. The minister of finance want to go and borrow two billion, and they, that is the request still with the national assembly right now. Compared to this fund here, makes that budget, that money they want to borrow, a peanut. Just a peanut. So now, why do people, why should the government want to humiliate itself to go and be looking for peanuts when there is an elephant in the room? So that's, that's, that, is, that is a comparison. It's a very sad story. It's a very sad story. But that is also Nigerian business, Nigerian govern, government for you. That's how they operate in the last 57 years. Uh, you also, I mean, I mean, I said it today that there's no reason why we should forgive our four, four, our grand grandfathers because they've been very wicked. They've been very callous to the cause of humanity. They've, been, they've not been very nice to us. They, yeah, no, 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 no. Because, they, because you, you want to, you, you want, you want to react to the good things your parents did for you. Uh, I, I see a, 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 a long list of uh, rules. I see a long list of uh, terrible things they did. They've never raised out in such a way. They didn't say that if you cook your fish, you cook your food, you cook your yam, if, it, if it's cooked, cover it. If you do something, cover it. So in the process, everybody grew up to like to just want to do his own business. And in the process, also the urge that uh, uh, how many uh, 158 million Nigeria? How many? We don't. We don't. I don't know the statistic. But I'm just using their figure. I'm just using their figure. So they, we, we became government in about 180 million places mm -hmm. because here you have a situation. You build your house. You provide all everything there. Abi, your borehole, your generator, your everything. The only two things which is not common that we do, is probably give it. In fact, some, some people are now choosing to hire private teachers to send there. Because you go to school, there's no line, there's no water, there's nothing. People are dying from renowned secondary schools in Lagos State, yes. uh, Queen's College, Yapa teachers. So people are doing everything for themselves. And that's why I say, we're not going to have a problem with them. Trust me, and I know them. They'd be too, too happy to let us do what we want to do. And you know why they cannot stop us? Because once we finish the indoctrination of the, uh, of the masses, they say, hello, don't even try. Yeah? You talk about, what Mr. Yes, I you, you talk about uh, having audience with Buhari. Buhari is a fantastic man. Like I said, I, 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 I worked my everything for him last time. I've, I'm not a member of his party. But he surrounded himself. He had, I'm sorry, I'm not being rude. It's telling the world that maybe his vision is also vision. -like. I mean, it's not too far because I expected him to roll his sleeve and say, 
I want light. I don't like generator. I don't want to smell all this fuel. So give me light. And people will start calling the, the engineers in Ukraine, in Germany, in all over the place. They will come home. Because the number three man who is behind the, one of the biggest states in America, Texas, the number three man who is in charge of the electricity is like my bro. If anything happens to the first and second, we will be the number, because it's a very powerful position in Texas. Light. And this is a massive place. Never, I, since I came, I was watching, I was waiting, I asked, ah, if your own light is not, it wouldn't go or what? Because you find it difficult to find, I mean, to, to, to understand why we should still be struggling for light. So having a conference with me, he's a, he's a quiet man, but we don't, we don't, what do I want to discuss with you? Allowed us to do NGO. He said, Dr. Fina, go do what you want to do. Thank you. Um, have I addressed that area? No, I'm, I'm surprised that they're not signing something and they're making up to do it. But that's typical. So what's that, Professor Shiba is doing? What, what, uh, we don't want to go into Paul because we don't want to be Paul. Because, because by question around that area anyway. Uh, yes. Because, uh, panelists, you I know uh, there is no free gift. Behind this. That's exactly what they were saying. Will you make these people understand that behind this helping you, helping you? Like you see all these tiny, tiny letters behind the agreement. They say accepted or not accepted. There might be something there that people are afraid of. Are we sure that, or how do we dispel the fear that they have? You know this condition behind all this loving gift they are giving us. Okay? They are loving people. They have no business with us. They, they just want to help us. But do you know, that, can you reassure Nigerians that behind this is just a help because they want to fulfill the heavenly mandate, that they are not going to enslave Nigerians? Or what exactly? Any other conditions there that we don't know that some people else might be afraid of? Exactly. That is what Nigerians, Nigerians think that they have something that somebody wants to enslave or take from them. We have nothing. Can you believe it that Nigeria has nothing? Let me just tell you that. We are, we are used to saying that the only thing we have in Nigeria are just our people. And we don't, nobody has any problem getting them. Like what you just say. Mm -hmm. Throw them the what offer. What, what offer is that? Green what? Green card or what do you call it? Lottery? Yeah. 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 Every one of them will run away. So we don't really have anything that not Nigeria at all. If you really, if the only thing we have as Nigeria is just people. The educated one, the, oh no, the best one. But the best one will run away tomorrow if you just give them offer. You know, so we don't really have anything. It's not a big a sheep to get Nigeria. We don't need, but when I was talking about VP, he's my friend. I sent some documents to him. He sent me, he's my friend, he, in fact. And he's my I, Yeah, he's so, you know, so he used to call me a mentor of his. He used to teach his church from my book. He would sit down in my conferences hosting my wife in his church to come and train his people. So I, he knows me very well, I know him. I mean, he respects me highly, I respect him. But when he became, he's so careful, he's a careful man. He's so careful, he's not reckless like me. So, because, so when I brought the proposal to him, he just sent me to one of his, let every, everybody, uh, everybody is cross checking, let's check, uh, what is their interest? What do they want from Nigeria? Why should they want to give something like this? Is it a loan? I say it's not a loan. It's going to be a grant. Ah, ah, how? It's, you know, so the, that, that's how that one died. We, we just going from some of his assistant to the other, uh, what, uh, advisor to the other, you know. Then, but the one that really made it work was that Tunde Bakari you mentioned now. That Tunde Bakari picked it up, flew down here, went to see the president. The president gave him, go get that for any amount, for anything it takes, make it happen. So he flew down here to meet with me. We had a whole week, we worked everything out. So everything was agreed, the president was support, everybody was support, I think. But they were not, they were even in favor of the conditions. But the thing is that they said, they've had some stories in Nigeria with signatures, they cannot, because they needed the signature either of the president or another one signature. 
either the first man or the, another man who is not VP, but another person. <laughs> yes. The, pro the probability of what happened, we're, we're, on, we're online right. speaking to the whole world. And we've been seeing this loud. Because uh, before we started our, pro uh, our project, we are seeing all in politics of Nigeria. We want the best thing for Nigerians. Uh, there's so many, there's so much politics going on in Asurok. And that is killing everybody. And if the gentleman you're talking about does not want, maybe, you see, can you imagine when a minister writes a letter to his boss and the letter didn't get there and he turned around and said, I did not receive the letter, let me leak it myself. In fact, the letter so the didn't get the letter to the president. He didn't even get to the president's table until Kuntu Bakar himself took it up, took it up so and it. went to see the president, all those kind of things. I said, this thing is too. But, but what I'm even concerned about with Nigeria is that everybody is careful that they want to take something from us. They want to. Oh, yeah. Believe me, they, I, you know, like we are overpricing ourselves, we're overrating ourselves. Mm -hmm. Believe me, we are not as good as you think we are in the eyes of people. Okay, let's, this is a Frenchman here. The only reason that will take him to Nigeria is just because he's a believer, he's a Christian, he's God, or money. But that money has to be three, four, five times more than they are paying in France. Otherwise, there is no interest. Nothing is attractive there. Let me just tell you the fact. Even here in Ukraine, to convince Ukrainians to go and live in Nigeria, also, if either it's a failure here, who cannot make anything happen, or you have to pay him ten times what he's getting now. Nigeria is not attractive to anybody. Hello, Doc. Let me interrupt you. I'm, well, sorry. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not talking too much. 93% of people that go to Nigeria, these white people, they are from prison. They are prisoners. Yes. So, just to buttress. Yes, me. sir. The Chinese. Yes. You might not be able to Google that. But, but if you talk to Nigerians in Nigeria. Them are from prison. Yeah. If you talk to, if you talk to Nigerians oh, in Nigeria, they are saying, ah, the white people don't want to go. They come to us, they don't want to live in Nigeria. Ah, they, ah, they, everybody wants to come to Nigeria. You what? You kidding me? You kidding me? Another illusion that Nigerians have about Nigeria is that Nigeria is a rich country. Don't tell me that crap. Nigeria is a poor country, extremely poor country, even with all the natural resources. Okay, for example, Nigeria, you, you know, we produce let's say two million barrels of oil in a day, in a in a day, right? So in with everything, by the time they sell, if they not this, if they don't steal anything. Let's see all the money come pure. The whole amount of money we make the, of, out of all that oil is seventy billion dollars. That is, and that out of that seventy billion dollars, uh, you know, about you know our, our obligations and everything is it seventy billion in a in a in a in a year, in a year seventy billion in a year. And by the time they do everything, they is just distributing. They just drip that. Out of that, 80% of it or so goes to just distribution among states. And the states, they just go and pay. It's just capital. It, is it 80% 80, 80 of it just capital? I mean, not capital. What do you call Concurrent. Con, yeah. Is it concurrent? Recurrent. Recurrent expenditures. It is just now that it has become, uh, it used to be 90% recurrent. It is just now that it's like 80 something. They just shop. Shop. What is it recurring? Recurring means what you spend and you cannot recollect again. It's not capital. They don't, eat, they, don't, they don't do any capital project with that money. They just shop. So we are very poor because you are only rich when you can... Okay, for example, let me give you an example. So that 70 billion that we have, we say we are poor, we are a rich country. Let's say uh, France, for example. They have 200 billion like that. We are 70 billion, but out of their own 200 billion, only about 20 billion go for recur uh, re recurrent. 10% go for recurrent. 90% go for capital. That is why we are poor, 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 stinkingly poor. Now, let me now take the money of oil. Let me you give you another example. Let's say it's even not recurrent, let's say it's distributed. 
The money we have in Nigeria now, let's say we distribute it, just all those money we are making every, the whole year, all the, let's say we are selling the oil the whole year and we are distributing to all Nigerians. By the time you finish distributing every Nigerian, eh, every Nigerian will get $300 or $200. But if the money that is coming in France or in US or in Singapore is distributed, Every person will get $40,000. We are getting $300 after our whole wealth is distributed. In Singapore or in, Jam in, in France, for example, they will get $38,000. Everyone, every member, every citizen. In Singapore, they will get $60,000. No, and we are getting $200, $300. You see, we are, we are extremely poor country. That is all our resources, so without even anybody stealing anything. Because we are not generating wealth. We are not creating. That's why that book is all about. This one here, Nigeria economy. We need to begin to create industries. If I want my way, I, we need to create right now in Nigeria. We, you know, they say we have companies. Companies? We don't have any company. We don't have any single company, industry in that country. Not the, the only single industry, one, that was, uh, that was uh, being built was Ajaukuta. And it's killed. It's not operational. The only, now, it's, it's only now that the first company that is being built is going to be a refinery company by Dangote. That's going to be the only legitimate, we're talking of industry. Industry, con concrete industry. Now, now, let me tell you what Soviet Union did. This Soviet Union, because I know there was a leader they called Stalin. He was a dictator. He was a, a brutal guy. He came in. In 10 years, he built 300,000 industries. 300,000. And he took their country to, from, you know, a third world, the, it became the second most industrialized country in the, in the world after America. The same thing. You know why they voted for people like Hitler? Germany was totally wrecked and killed after First World War. That guy, that Hitler, in seven years, in six years, he took the economy of Germany, he built so many industries, he built like, you know, 20,000 leading industries, companies. It became the first economy in Europe. Ah, so we are not we and we have just one industry. So we we, we are not we are distributing. I have a plan for the governors. Let them hear me now, because one of the things I'm going to start. I didn't want to talk political issues, but one of the things I'm going to start when we're there, we are going to create this social movement that no we are going to veto. I mean vet. We are going to vet every uh, aspiring governor. I was crying this my room when I was listening uh, when we were campaigning for, you know, this APC was campaigning, even though I campaigned for them. I was campaigning for them because I just knew Jonathan was off the table, off the option. But I never heard what they were saying. Then I listened to uh, Bola Tinubu, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that, the president himself, Buhari. They had a campaign. They, had, they were just shouting. No, no logical. Anyway. Anyway, but then the governors are even worse. Can you imagine now? Governors are getting money to run their state from allocation from the central government. It should never happen. We have to start a movement. If you cannot tell me, you want to become governor of that state? You want to become governor of that state? You want to become governor of that state? You want to tell me that you want to become governor of that state? If there are 10 of you, all 10 of you have to come to me and tell me how you are going to generate that $5 billion from your own state. What are you going to create? What industry? How is that? What are your plans now, before you even dream of going there, that you are going to generate, that are going to, how will you in four years build the economy that will generate that amount of money? That $5 billion, if you cannot generate so what we are going to be campaigning about is not anybody who can talk most. I mean, look at what is happening in Anambra State. Everybody just talking. Everybody. I mean, these people are disgracing me. These people are disgracing me. All right? 
These people are disgracing me. Because all those candidates that are there, none of them is telling me what is going to, where is going to get it. They are all telling me they are going to build schools. But they are lo looking for allocation from the government. The only thing, when we will start, I'm, I, I don't have any authority now, all right? but when the time comes, we are going to put on movements in, in place that will demand that all you candidates, 10 or 7 candidates, you are going to prove to us on national television that you have a system in place and a structure, infrastructure, and understanding on how to attract either through direct, foreign direct investment, and you already have companies that will give you letter, MOU, that we are coming, if you become governor, we are coming to invest this billion amount of, so we are going to, you are going to show it on television like this. Just like I'm coming with this amount. I said, this is the amount I'm bringing within the first year. Or this is the amount of companies that have agreed. This company, there, this company that have, we, I have hundred, I mean, I was listening to one Ojimadu, Ojimabu, Oji, or is it or your state governor, Ojimadu, or is his name? Ajimobi. Ajimobi, Ajimobi. Uh -huh. Ajimobi. Uh, they call you the authority. Authority. I don't care what authority. It's not authority. Anyway, what was his name? <laughs> Aj that Ajimobi guy, they were interviewing him on television. He was saying, I am not like my predecessor governors. All my predecessor governors, they just come here and eat and go. But me, you go to the expressway between one road or the other and said, <laughs> you know, I have attracted 10. They are not, nothing less than 10 uh, companies that I've brought. What are the companies? Import and export. Yeah, I slap you, eh? <laughs> if I slap you. <laughs> I know. And that's why I say uh, they call him. Uh, He's supposed to be. I'm talking about dictator. 300,000 yeah. industries. You are telling me nothing less than 10 companies that are attracted to the state. Nothing less than 10. And they are just important as for tire. That one is spare part. That one is tire. Ah ah! You want me to kill you? Yeah. Uh -huh. ah, 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 and, and we, we also. Uh, <laughs> just to tell you, we, we will don't, not. Don't anger me, oh. uh, I, I, I wish I, I wish we have uh, all day, all the time to continue talking because uh, people like us, we, we have stuck so many things in our head. Uh, I will have. So many time, so many weeks to continue pouring them, you know, in such a manner that at least you guys can take something. Can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine anywhere in Europe, even in the Soviet, you know, days? Uh, 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 no, hang on a minute. <laughs> uh, where you're going to have schools? Schools. Who can tell me the importance of education in any nation? If, can anybody just tell me what? How important is education? Extremely important. We, we have a country where we can lock the schools for them. Nothing will happen. We have a country where we don't pay teachers. We have a country we don't even tie up the roads. We don't care. Our Medicare is in coma. Comatosis before death, have you? Yes. You know, <laughs> that has already already died. Th these are the things we have, and we are not we are not shaming. We are telling the truth. And we are telling the world. Uh, Otuba, yes, you know, this is Aram's here. He is not fighting for political office. But he, as he's standing here right now, he will present me with a plan on how to attract in the next three, four, five years at least how many, how many billion dollars to a state or to, in the country. To, uh, to our economy, to how to generate. Uh, 50 billion. 50 billion US dollars. 50 billion. He can sell me. Not from the not from the federal allocation. It will be yeah. Into no. This is what it will create. So Fifty billion. Yes. <laughs> this is. <laughs> I forgot. Yes. I got. You know. I got emotional. You know. This, this thing is just eating me up inside. Yeah. You know. I'm sorry, guys. You know. You have to forgive me. I just. I'm just. Uh, you know. Yeah. I'm just angry a little bit. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> so he. He is just on, a, a Nigerian too. But with the brain thinking, and you go to Nanabra, the election is this year, this month or so, and you go to the list, nobody is telling you. He can tell you, prove it, that I'm going to create a movement or a system that will generate up to $50 billion in the next 10 years for the country. 
can you imagine if we elect every somebody like that for a governor in every state? Every state is generated, apart from the 70 that the federal government is generating, every state is generating their own 50 in a year. Every state, we elect people like that, like that kind of mind that can say, I will create this, what I will, now, I'm not getting it from anywhere, just, you don't need to be supplying me. I'm creating this. Because when you become the governor, you can assess, you know, international yes. fund and, yes. you know. Yes. See, that is the thing, when you are a governor, when we, we, we approach the governor uh, of a do state and say, okay, look, what I wanted from the governor is, um, is for him to sign a document to give to us and say, look, not to, comp you know, to, to, to commit themselves to anything, to just say, okay, this, we support this project. And please, anywhere you go with this document, uh, please give him the support that is needed to accomplish this project. That's it. And then secondly, I said, Similar to yes, that I yes, and I said, we need the governor to come up, because we were planting some trees, to f plant the first tree openly. It's not a big deal. So you just come, you plant the not first tree, a just to give a boost to the program, and we announce it and everything. That those simple two acts, the governor refused to do it. Can you imagine that? The governor refused to do it, of and state, of my own state. And you are an indigenous. Yes, I'm indigenous, born there. <laughs> and not only that, not only that, I then talks were sent after me on social media everywhere to discredit me. So if you go to the social media, if you go to Facebook, if you go to my page, you type my name, you, 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 you will see the document there. So I was forced to release the document to the public and say, look, this is what the fight is all about. You know? So, and then it, it hurts when you see that, look, you can, the, the life of a single Nigerian can transform. It is this, it's no gimmick. There are so many things there that we can use to transfer the life of his every single Nigeria, Nigerian. So what, 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 this is what hurts me, that what happens now is that they only assist those who come to destroy the place. I think that was what you were trying to say. Yeah. I said, yes, yeah, sabotage. If you come to Nigeria, you want to help destroy the country, they will welcome you with full arm. Mm. So now you have uh, Chinese who come to Nigeria, they, they go and cut down our trees. You know, in Edo State, we have this uh, tree called ebony. Mm -hmm. Ebony is one of the most expensive tree in the world. A cube of ebony costs ten thousand yeah. dollars. If you have expensive piano, that black key mm -hmm. is ebony. Mm -hmm. You know where they get it from? From Edo State. Mm -hmm. But all the, all the ebony trees in Edo State have been cut down by the Chinese. You know how much they give the villagers? Eighty thousand naira. Oh. They will carry ebony, ebony tree that is worth what millions of dollars they'll carry them out. Because our people don't even know what the value. They say, now black tree, they take and make door. Uh, so this is a thing. And the, 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 the government doesn't even want us to educate the people. Because what we're trying to do is educate them, enlighten them. So those are the things, that those are the things we are fighting. And those are the things, that's why you see some of, our, some of us keep talking online. Because we keep talking to educate our people because the problems we have can be resolved in a matter of a few years. It's, you know, because they are, great, they are great ideas and they are not just fantasy. These are ideas that have been proven. You know, uh, a single, if, you know in, a, in a good country that people want to develop, the governor will even say to you, are you sure? Yes, are you sure? Yes, come, let's work with you. What do you need? Our governors, will not, our politicians doesn't ask that. I've challenged all states in Nigeria, except Lagos State, because their GDP is high in Lagos State. I said, I put out a challenge and say, any state governor who contacts me and want to work with us, I will double the GDP of that state in three years. He's giving them a challenge. Yes, through agriculture. Through agriculture, I will double the, I said, the only thing you have to do, just call me and I will give you a presentation. Give you a two hours presentation with facts and how I'm going to do it. See, tomorrow nobody contacted me. None of the states. Yes, none of the states. Yes. And to make sure that the video was, that nobody said they don't see him, I boosted it. Over 100,000 people saw that video. And it was of, on, on what they call it, WhatsApp and everything. They were mailing it to everybody. 
But nobody called me once. Nobody wrote me. I put my WhatsApp telephone number on it, my everything, so that you don't say I know you didn't really know how to contact him. So at least call me bluff. If I have said that in the United States, a governor would call me. Say, let's call him bluff. Come, come and talk it. So let's see what you have. But nobody called me because they are afraid that I could be right. Yeah, because we deal in, again, like I used the word a couple of times here today, that uh, the, uh, people that have no vision, mm, they are they're very difficult to do business with. Because uh, you just be talking to the air. And that is not even all. If you are dealing with people who are very wicked, we all know what wickedness is. These people take an average, uh, I see places in the country that I will not take my dog there. I will not take a dead rat even there. When you look at police stations, when you, when you look at things, this, uh, this is the truth. And, and I'm happy to see my, 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 my brother from the north. He's got into a, a, a stage, hopefully with this, with this uh, uh, our project is going to make a difference and people are going to start seeing that it's still all possible, that we can have. In Nigeria, we are so blessed with so many things. But because we have big collection of uh, 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 bad doers, you know, bad people who are running, there are not many of them. I used the example at the mini session we had before this uh, uh, meeting, that I have an American, I mean, an Australian uh, a lawyer who said, Otumba, you always say, no, you call me body. So you always say, less than 1% are people troubling you. What happened with the remaining 99%? And that's why I think we should be part of the remaining 99% to ask, start asking questions, start making, bring by the desired change. You know what I mean? So, because so this Pastor, the MOU for this project, uh, instead of um, us having problems. The MOU for this um, project that we that um, we are um, planning before you are able to leave uh, Ukraine, instead of us going to encounter problem before it, can't we get signatures right now? Can't we start collecting signatures of every Nigerian? I said it has just been. They just told inform me last month that it's off the table. That's why I was always they kept it for six months, just in case the Nigerian government would change. It, they would be ready to sign the MOU. And somebody just wrote me now and said, Pastor, I didn't know if I had known about this, I, I could get the MO, MOU signed by the government. I have, you know, I contact in the presidency. Just wrote me now. But so the I, money is gone now. I made an announcement. Mm. I, yes, I made the announcement on the, I don't know if anybody remembers, December last year, or November, December last year, I made the announcement on the, this live broadcast. Anybody knows highly placed people in Nigerian government, I need you, please, contact them, contact me, and, you know, the only person that we could get, you know, anyway, it's, it's off the table, it was just off the table last month. Right. Uh, okay. And quickly, madam, yeah. and this also take us, I mean, I mean, I'm a broadcaster, and this is also part of our, our duty towards this project. We must learn how to share. We must learn how to share information. They're not, they're not uh, secret information. They're not, they're not information to topple anybody. We must learn how to share. That's how you get up to the one printers. And also, yeah. how I manage within a 48 minutes uh, interview. I got 11,000. It's massive, judging from the way things are break. You understand me? So we must learn how to share information. It's still a niche, or how do they say it? You know, if we have shared this information, probably we will have said, but then again, we never know what it is. This MOU thing does not affect our own. Oh, no. no, that's what he's saying. He said no. the money is off the table. No, 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 no. no. So this is something different for this. Uh, yeah, different this is a different project. No, okay. no, no, no. no. Uh, uh, yeah, so what I'm saying now is this the, the MOU that is going to, or whatever is going to be necessary to be signed between America and whosoever hmm. is giving the money and us. Uh, if we need to raise a movement yes. now to go and present to our government no. to say they must sign anything that needs to be signed. Uh, uh, Pastor. Uh, Madam is asking, is stop okay. thinking. Yeah, the, the finances yeah, yeah. that you have run around and um, that um, we need to start this project, yeah. they are going to need a signature. Uh, no, no, this is different. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's completely okay. different. Okay. Okay. We are intact. Okay. Okay. So all I was saying is that if we are going to need this. This one we are talking about, we don't need to. Mm -mm. 
Okay, okay. We don't need them. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Like we say, we, we don't, we will not touch them. Okay. Okay. Mm. I just, I just happen to be. Yeah, you happy? Of yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, is is we would not we would we online we on course there won't be any you know well the the only problem I'm looking at maybe we need dedicated highly dedicated people because when these people and it's not going to be a kind of a lump sum money given to Rosabi it's going to be in budget as we yeah, need yeah, it's going to be by project by project. you understand me so uh, and that's why there will not be space for people who want who believe this is the best time to complete their. Uh, their their houses or whatever, because <laughs> apply or buy whatever. But the good thing would be when we have good roads, when we have good schools, when we have everything, you and I will be able to relax, enjoy a better life as we are getting here in Europe. They work for it. These people sacrificed. These people sacrificed. He will confirm when, uh, when was the name of that man in France? when it was 1776, when he was started making trouble, the, the people look at him and say, you know what? It's better to take off his head. Am I right? So got the, you know, what's the name of the king there again? Louis, in, in Louis, Louis, he, Louis Sistine. Yes. Louis Sistine, yeah. <laughs> but hopefully we're not going to do that. We, we understand me. So these people, what I'm trying to say is, the Europeans, they worked for all what we are enjoying today. And we must get it in. And it, it, it is a shame, it, it pains me to find out that the number one person behind the railway project in Iraq is a Nigerian. It pains me to notice that uh, somebody that was picked up from Gotha, Professor Yibo, is the one that solved the, uh, uh, the equation of uh, Einstein that he put in uh, Almighty. Almighty. The Almighty. There, there, there's so many. So really and honestly, and you know what? They're all tired. They want to come back home. So, but there must be a playing game. There must be a structure in place to help them. And there's a bit of this, I have my own agenda. As time goes on, it may be we can have a competing uh, state where it's going to be only mainly only the diasporans. But the danger I'm having until when we put this structure in place, we might fall into that pit that our governor will be, want to write a bet, and we will tell and say, hello, come out can do this. So, but the structure must be in order to tame, deal with any leader that want to take their people for a ride. I always cherish when I remember Orange Revolution. Where was that? Yes, that was here. Yeah. America, yeah? No, no. Ah, okay. I, I, I'm, I, I'm being sarcastic, I know. So, that, that is envy of the whole, many, many other European countries that you can do so much. And people, in fact, there were people that give birth to children, they are pregnant. Yes. They, they were, they, they, you know, we, we must be dedicated. We must be ready. It's not going to be war, but all we just need to be focused. I have said it many times. We just need to be ready to work. Well, I think we, I mean, I, I cannot close yeah, the, is the boss, yeah. is the boss who can close. Okay. I think, <laughs> yeah, the time is, you know, even if we don't close, uh, Facebook will shut us down. Okay. We are just a few minutes shut of four hours. Yeah. Playing, um, and they don't want you to go before, beyond four hours. So thank you so very much. Everybody that is watching, go and share this message. This, Please. This, uh, vid, you know, this something. Let's go about. We have over 8,000 people now watching me. I mean, watched. And then, so let's go and share the message. Go share the message. Spread the word. Uh, share it. And uh, tag your friends. And let people see if the people want the ones who will believe will believe the ones who don't want to believe will not believe no problem but uh then some people want to get the books about nigeria they want to find out to get the books well you know like i said there is this book about the nigerian economy the way forward that's if you are economically inclined and you you know this is uh only god can save nigeria what a myth that's a myth then how to make nigeria the greatest country in the world uh the Nigerian economy, how the Nigerian economy can overtake the American economy, and this one is the fundamental of them all. Nigeria and the leadership question, they are all of uh, Amazon and uh, on uh, Okada books. And uh, there is uh, this lady in Lagos who could help you get them as well, Shioma. 
so she, I mean, number is always there in the comments. And um, what can I say? Uh, con concerning people asking about why don't I come to Nigeria, we've already answered that question. It's not in my power right now, the way things are. Uh, like I said, I'm still fighting my demons here in Ukraine. My name needs to be cleared before I go to do anything. Even with these people, they need to make know that my name is clear. Everybody needs to know that my name is cleared. And, and uh, so that one, there's no negotiating that. I cannot leave this country without my name. And I've thrown a spanner into that. Everything is saying to me, they have uh, someone who is contributing immensely to uh, not only the economy, but also to the moral yeah. standing of this country. And maybe they might find it difficult. It's a challenge. I'm sure if they hear about it, they say, ah, somebody spotted something, yeah. <laughs> you know. When but, I announced that uh, I was going to leave Ukraine for Nigeria for good, I had crisis in my church. They said, mm -hmm. we have followed the audit here. What do you want us to do? Where do we go? Mm. I had major yeah, yeah. But, but I also believe that uh, uh, even though I don't go to church the last time I'm going to say it, there's, there must be a reason for everything. Uh, there must be, you see, so much you have achieved here. Probably we will have not have this drawing board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there will be so many power cuts. There will be so many times you will have uh, be soaked in the generator problem and say, you know what, hello, I have enough. So I'm signing off. My name is Otumba Labor. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Uh, this is the end of the HFT. I want to congratulate all the HFT participants that came and the ones that participated from home. This is the end of the day, the end of HFT. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.